Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, this is the uh, East Long Meadow uh, Community Preservation Committee meeting for February 4th. Uh, with me uh, today, it's uh, uh, John Tor in attendance, John Torsha, Tom Kay, uh, Ralph Cooley. Uh, I believe we just had Brian Davis, but he might be, he should be back soon. And um, before we start, uh, is there anyone uh, in the audience recording at this time? If so, please identify yourself. Um, seeing none. Um, okay, so. Um, oh, hi, Francis. Hi. Francis is also in attendance. Um, I think, uh, Mr. Mackey, I think that might be um, Tony's phone number. Yep, I did. I think I did let him in. I don't see him yet. Okay. All right. And so another person I am waiting on is the so the way uh, the meeting will go this evening. So first off on our agenda is uh, it mentions uh, meeting minutes. So what I plan on doing at our next meeting is kind of I know we've had a couple meeting sessions where there hasn't been meeting minutes. So I hope to uh, catch up on those and then in mass be able to uh, review and approve those uh, hopefully at our next meeting for March. Um, so that's um, the plan for that. Um, so next on our um, agenda item, uh, so we have a guest speaker this evening, Stuart Saginar. Uh, he is uh, works for the state CPC. Uh, he has been helpful in the sense of giving me guidance on um, where to go with some of these applications, uh, learning about CPC uh, and some of the rules and specific things, um, not only getting them through this process, but uh, if a project's approved, it has to go to the town council. And then even after the town council approves of it, uh, our committee's responsibility is to follow up, make sure that money is spent um, and whatnot. Uh, so uh, I am looking at the attendees section. I, I don't see him yet, John. I don't see him here. Um, I will give him another minute or two. Uh, and if he's not on, what I will do is I will just uh, go through the rest of the agenda and then we will, we can turn back uh, to him um, and his presentation once he uh, comes um, back on. Um, but before I begin, uh, while we have this sort of brief uh, waiting period, is uh, does the committee have any um, comments they wanna make at the beginning? I think Tony just. Yeah, sorry, that was just a. That was my mistake that he that I, I when I clicked on him it didn't it didn't connect, okay. so that's him. Okay, so I don't see Stuart, um, uh, but I did just send him a very quick note, just seeing if he, um, uh, we had a few, a uh, couple uh, pretty positive email exchanges. Um, so I, uh, a couple days ago, so um, he does know of the time and the, uh, the agenda and a link to the Zoom. Um, Okay, so seeing that he is uh, not here right now and not to um, delay anything further, um, uh, we'll get into the um, projects uh, right now. Uh, so in order of uh, how they were uh, given to me uh, at the beginning, of, at the October 1 deadline, uh, I have the, uh, we'll first discuss the East Long Meadow High School track um, application. Uh, so I know that uh, 
Superintendent Smith is uh, with us this evening. Also, um, uh, Mr. Bruce Feeney, I believe is also in attendance. Uh, so, uh, Superintendent Smith, uh, would you be able to kind of give us, or, or Bruce, both uh, kind of like a uh, general overview of the project for the committee uh, and for those uh, at home? Sure. Um, actually, we also have our uh, school committee chair with us this evening. I think he's yes. in the uh, attendees. Uh, yeah, we can pull him in uh, as well, Mr. Thompson. There's Mr. Thompson. And I think he's Mr. Right. Benny's with us as well. It looks like he's hiding behind some kind of... Uh, <laughs> That's a great trick, Bruce. <laughs> oh, goodness. You know how to undo that? I do. Just give me a minute. Okay. I can, if I, nothing, I, Mr. Torsha, we seek to entertain. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's we're, right. we're trying okay. to find the settings. You guys can go ahead. Yeah. And read. Bruce. Yeah. Uh, click on next to your video camera. There's a little up carrot there. Ah. Yep, gotcha. And then you got to go to advanced. Uh, I'm just saying I want to be where you're at, Bruce. I well, <laughs> looks, looks beautiful, man. Yeah, <laughs> that's down at West Palm Beach. Um, nice. <laughs> so, virtual background on the left. Hold on. Oh, okay. Hold on. None. There we go. Okay, all right, I'm back. Back from West Palm Beach. Good to have you back. <laughs> um, just by way of uh, introduction, uh, first, thank you for the opportunity to speak to this project. And um, as I said, uh, Mr. Thompson and Mr. Fenny are, are both here and, and very um, uh, knowledgeable of, of this project and things that we've done. So certainly um, jump in any time, gentlemen. Uh, basically, this was something that uh, started on our capital plan a couple of years ago. Uh, the track and the field, they were one project that was completed back in 2011. And we knew that um, somewhere within the time frame of roughly eight to 10 years, we were going to have to resurface the track. And um, one of the things that we always wanted to do was commit um, funds that maybe we were pulling in from rentals, although the pandemic uh, over the last year has uh, killed that uh, opportunity. But we still do in our rental account have about 28,000 that we're putting toward um, the resurfacing of the track as well as maintenance of the um, turf field. And with that, uh, what we're hoping to do, given that the track is used by obviously all the high school athletic teams, um, but more importantly, probably on a daily basis by East Long Meadow residents who just want to get out and walk or run, um, as well as um, early on in my tenure, uh, we used to have uh, Department of Rec camps that would be on the fields, in the track, um, in the gym and actually talking with um, the rec department this week, that might be something hopefully if we can get through this pandemic that we can have happen again. Um, so it is something that's used by the community and um, something that we feel should qualify. And I think uh, Mr. Torshi, you said that you have someone from the state CPC uh, who probably could give us some details in terms of what projects are eligible or not eligible. Uh, so. This is something that uh, is somewhat of a joint uh, project, DPW, school department, uh, certainly uh, the town manager actually, was, I, through her secretary, Jennifer Kerr, was the one who, after we had it on our capital project list, sent it back out to Mr. Fenny and me and, and asked if this is something that we might want to coordinate and put in for a CPC application. Uh, Bruce, if uh, I missed anything in terms of time frame or sort of the what the life expectancy of the track is? Yep, nope. Um, this is one of those ongoing maintenance items too, and um, at some point in time too, we'd have to uh, we have to upgrade the turf as well. That has a life expectancy as well. But um, the track surfacing, obviously, due to the the use of the track um, with meets and everything else. 
Um, it's typical, um, this is an ongoing maintenance item that will need to take place uh, depending on how much use is um, every eight to 10 years. Um, if you don't do it in this time frame, you actually wear out the surface too much and then you do a full, um, a full rehab of the, of the surface itself. So instead of this uh, roughly $134,000 price tag, you're talking about a quarter of a million dollars. Um, so it's, it is crucial that we, uh, we get this going now. Um, pretty straightforward project. Um, there's not a lot to it. It's just a, it's a big area. So there, therefore the price tag, it's actually, you have to mask off the entire uh, field, including the turf. Um, they end up, uh, sanding down the existing, um, surface. It's roughly about six, six coats, six layers of, uh, this plexi, uh, pave material. Um, it's a latex material, but it has to be put on in layers. Um, and then obviously the lining on top of that. Um, so it's a pretty straightforward project. Um, the price also includes, um, for our engineering firm, Gale Associates, it actually um, helped us with the project in 2011. Um, they're kind of our local expert, I guess you could say, that I use for um, um, for information regarding this, uh, this facility. And... Um, helped out with our tennis court facility over at the high school. Um, so roughly $25,000 will be for the engineering firm to produce bid documents, drawings, and specifications for the project and oversee it. Um, I just don't have the expertise uh, when it comes to uh, the application of this type of material and, and uh, making sure it's, it, it's applied correctly. That's and. Kind of yeah. Chairman Torcha, if I could just uh, re, uh, continue on that, uh, as you see in your materials that uh, we submitted, Gale Associates has recommended that the, sur the track be resurfaced because of wear and tear, uh, and that it's past its life expectancy. Uh, so they recommend uh, resurfacing that. Also, um, we know that Long Meadow has used CPC funds to resurface their track. So. I know you're uh, looking for an expert in the CPC realm to, to help in terms of qualifications, but uh, Longmeadow did uh, resurface their track um, using CPC funds. So certainly uh, if it qualifies for them, I would say it would qualify for us. And as uh, Superintendent Smith mentioned, um, certainly useful to the community, uh, the phrase community preservation, this is, this is a, uh, a well worthwhile project um, that we see folks of all ages uh, on exercising every day um, and uh, certainly a valuable resource for the town uh, and uh, we just want to keep keep the maintenance up on that. Okay, um, so first off, just uh, I, uh, Mr. Mackey, I think Lynn Booth is in the attendees list, so um, if you would be able to pull her in as well. Um, so. Uh, well, thank you, gentlemen, uh, for that presentation. Uh, and uh, Mr. Thompson, I did not know uh, the Longmeadow CPC information. That's actually uh, quite helpful because, uh, unfortunately, Stuart's not here, but uh, I did have a couple good emails with him and showed him uh, both this application and the other two applications that we're going to be discussing this evening. And some of, you know, he showed me some of the definitions that the CPC has. And a lot of these projects, um, the ones that are funded by the CPC would be considered more capital uh, investments. Uh, the CPC can't fund maintenance projects. Uh, and what he had explained to me in, in, in our email exchanges was that um, it's sort of up to local discretion of whether you would consider a project like this a capital investment or a maintenance. Um, so, Bruce, I know you're pretty, you know, expertise with um, public works, um, would you consider this more of a capital investment uh, into uh, the track um, or sort of a general wear and tear maintenance? I, it's, that's kind of a tricky question. Um, I'm not sure I have the answer. Um, may I, yeah, may I offer John, can I take a stab at it? But sure. So, so um, we initially had put it forward as a capital request, um, as we do many projects every year, and typically, you know, about 20% are funded. Uh, our town manager, Mary McNally, suggested specifically that this specific project go through um, CPC because it qualifies, right, and it's a, it's a funding source. 
Um, so certainly you could fit into a capital project if um, that's the way we wanted to go. But as I said, uh, Mary had um, suggested that we apply for CPC funding because in her grand scheme of funding all capital projects and the budget, um, she sought, saw that you know, CPC would be a good avenue uh, for this. So to answer your question, it could definitely go either way. Uh, but if we have the funding source um, through CPC, as you know, uh, it doesn't uh, go directly towards our, our taxes or uh, a bonding issue. Um, and again, it's, it's preserving uh, things for the community. I think it's exactly what it was meant for. So, you know, as opposed to other projects that are new and expand and cost us more money, this is already something that's established, that's being used. Um, and so, again, we're just preserving um, community activity. So. Yeah, so I, I see um, I see this as, you know, preserving a, you know, important, um, you know, thing that the high school offers. Uh, I do know, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the, um, the high school not only offers this to the students and, you know, that participate in different sports and whatnot, but also the public uh, frequently can use uh, the track or can rent out the track, I believe. The general community has that ability. Uh, public's allowed on it um, daily. And uh, if you drive through the parking lot on any given day, you'll see people exercising early morning, uh, sometimes at lunch, uh, and definitely uh, at the end of the day, at least when uh, days are a little bit longer with light uh, in the winter. Uh, so it is something we certainly want uh, people to use, want the community to use. And, and one other distinction in terms of maintenance versus capital, um, through the years that the track's been in use, we have been um, maintaining it and patching it in certain areas and so forth. And that generally is funded um, either through that rental account um, or just simply through school department operational budget. Yeah, and so I know, so just so the public's aware, so this entire project will also have, uh, if approved, um, funding that is already in existence from a revolving account from that that rental monies that are collected over preceding years um, to help fund this project. Um, I believe uh, if I, I had a project right in front of me. Yeah, 28,000 that we could contribute um, currently for that. Yeah, 28,000, okay. So that would be, it's about 162. So what's, uh, what, what's the project is being asked for from our side is 134 uh, plus the, the 28 from the revolving account. Right. John Stewart here. You want to bring him in? Yes, actually. Uh, that would be fantastic. Um, uh, so I, if, if you are all okay, uh, I was going to have Stuart on. Uh, he can go through his presentation. And then if you're uh, willing to stay on, he could answer any type of um, questions about particularly this project or even uh, the, the future projects, uh, if that's okay with everyone here. Good evening, Stuart. Hi, John. How are you? Very good. Very good. It, I know we've had a lot of email interactions. Good to see uh, virtual. <laughs> yes, I have no idea what you look like until right now. So yeah. yep. <laughs> that's good. Um, so uh, can you just quickly, and maybe folks can introduce themselves just so I can get a sense of who's on the line. I, I missed the start of your meeting because I thought it started at 7, but then I just saw your email for me to join early. So I popped in as soon as I could. Sure, sure. Um, so if everybody, um, we have some, uh, uh, some guests uh, representing the applicants here and then also committee members. So if everybody uh, wants to go uh, around, um, Tony? I'm here. Okay. That's uh, Ralph. Tilly. Ralph? Hello. Uh, Ralph, what, what committee are you representing on the CPC? The Historical Commission. You're the historic rep. Okay, great. Thank you. And I believe Tony and Brian are at-large members. Uh, and Francis, you are conservation? Yes, I'm Francis Cornetti, and I'm representing the Conservation Commission. That's oh, nice great. You, Stuart. you too. And uh, Lynn here is representing the Housing Authority. Okay, great. Hi, Lynn. Hi, Lynn. 
Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Yeah, I'm from the Great. John, did you want to finish your discussion of the project with your applicants so they don't have to sit through the whole presentation? Because this is not on, on the um, project. Yeah, actually, um, you know what? We'll continue this, pre, uh, this discussion now, uh, but I wanted to bring you into it because we were discussing sure. sort of the difference between uh, a capital project and maintenance. And that was sort of, uh, uh, so uh, Mr. Thompson, who is the chairman of our school committee uh, here in town, uh, brought to my attention, uh, actually, I'll let Greg uh, go. Uh. Uh, yeah, hi, Stuart. Uh, Greg Thompson, chairman of the school committee, uh, also joined by Gordon Smith, our superintendent of schools, and uh, Bruce Finney, who is the uh, superintendent of the Department of Public Works. Um, yeah, so we're just uh, applying for the track resurfacing uh, we had originally submitted it as a capital project. Our town manager, Mayor McNally, had suggested that we go through community preservation um, for the resurfacing project. Um, we have literature from Gale Associates. I don't know if you've seen it uh, specifically that, uh, you know, the track has, is worn and is ready for resurfacing. It was originally put in in 2011. Um, it's a rubberized surface and we would re-rubberize it basically. Um, just of note, Long Meadow, our neighboring town, resurfaced their track uh, using CPC funds as well. Uh, so we feel that it's an appropriate use of community preservation. Um, the facilities used recreationally by the whole community, um, from young to old, uh, always people on the track exercising, um, you know, bettering their health. It's, it's certainly a, an asset to the town and um, we just feel that CPC might be the best way to go for it. So, okay. uh, Stuart, so I didn't, so, um, so yeah, so that's sort of the question um, going kind of whether or not it's a, uh, you know, a capital project uh, or not. Right. So there's, um, well, there's really two decisions to make that, you know, the CPC has to decide is, is one is whether it's maintenance or capital. Um, and that's just an eligibility question. But then the second question you have to decide as a committee is, you know, is it a project you want to fund? Does it fit within your CPA plan? Is it one of your priorities? Um, you know, what are the other projects you have in front of you for now or looking down the road and whether it makes sense? So it's really two separate decisions. Sometimes folks, get stuck on the allowability decision and they reach a, they reach the answer that yes, it's allowable. And then they definitely expect that it's going to be funded, but that's really just the first step. The second step is, you know, does the CPC want to recommend it? Does it fit into their plan, et cetera? So um, obviously the second, the second thing I can't help you with, that's, you know, that's your decision. Um, as jo John, as you and I discussed by back and forth on email, this is a tough one because CPA has its own definitions of maintenance and capital improvement. They may not be the same as the town uses, for example. So because you're, you would apply um, through the capital budget of the town, you know, to get this done if the town was paying for it, um, doesn't necessarily mean it's a capital project as far as CPA is concerned. So I think John and I had sent those definitions to you of what, uh, for CPA purposes, what maintenance is and what a capital improvement is. Um, and a track is a, is a tough one. Um, you know, we've had towns go both ways, I think, on it, depending upon the circumstances. You mentioned one that decided it was a capital improvement and, and, and wanted to go forward with it. Um, we've had the other towns that said, well, look, you know, a track, it needs to be resurfaced every, you know, eight to 10 years. It's like, you know, it's like painting a house. You got to do it every eight to 10 years. And they felt that something done on a schedule like that or cutting the grass, you do that every week. You know, they felt that that was um, a maintenance item according to those definitions that are in CPA. So, you know, if you read the definitions and take them word for word, you know, it, it does seem more like a, a maintenance item. Um, but like I said, it's a local decision and we have had communities go both ways on it. Um, so it's a, it's a tricky one. I think I, well, the first thing I joined in, Jonathan, you asked someone, I forget who on the group, 
you know, is this maintenance or a capital improvement? And the first person that maybe it was Bruce, I think the first per, the first thing he said was, well, that's a tricky question. Um, Cause it is, you know, this, um, this one is, is uh, tricky. The painting of, um, you know, just painting of a building, you know, that gets tricky too. Some people say, well, you know, it's, it's a, um, you know, a preservation project because if we don't do it, the building will, you know, take on uh, rot and that sort of thing. And others, people say, no, you have to paint a building every 10 years, it's maintenance. So these are hard, these are difficult decisions. And that's, you know, when we get reached, when we are, when someone reaches out to us with a question like this, we always like to give a definitive solid answer that folks can go by and, you know, and, and this one is very unsatisfying to get that question in the email because it's hard to give a definitive answer. Uh, good evening, Stuart. Uh, this is Tom Kay, uh, one of the members here. Uh, I have a question. If the track and the facilities have been, um, I don't know, like uh, if funds have been raised, you know, um, admissions been charged on that facility, um, wouldn't that be set aside as, is this maintenance or of a for-profit or a, a profit center or cost center for that school or, or whatever facility? So yeah, if, if money's been charged to be part of this facility already for the last eight years, does that change anything from a CPC perspective because it's for the public? Um. Do you mean like, uh, oh, I mean, the, the question that I normally get, and maybe this is what you're asking, um, is it Tom? Yes, sir. Um, are you asking because um, they might charge, like we get the question sometimes when um, folks want to um, fix up a, a skateboard park, for example, a public skateboard park, but the skateboard park does charge, you know, you have to buy a license fee to use it, you know, for 20 bucks a year or something like that, or tennis courts, you know, that the town might charge for. Some people say, well, you can't use CPA on that because there's a charge to use them. Um, and it doesn't say anything about that in the law. That's really just up to the CPC to decide whether they want to support a project like that. So that doesn't ordinarily knock it out. But what fees are you talking about? Because there wouldn't be a fee when the public wants to use the track in the afternoon, right? If they just want to go walk on it after school, there's no fee. So what do well, you there, 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 there is a fee to utilize the facility. There's a facility fee that the recreation department is charged by the school department. Oh, you mean for a group to use it? So if, um, if someone wants to rent the facility, you mean, and use it for in that way? No, no for, for example, the recreation department from a cost center perspective, um, is charged a fee by the school department for a school usage fee. Uh, John, if yes, I could sir. clarify that. Yes. Yeah. Please, so please, Greg. We, we have a maintenance fee. Um, so we have an agreement with the recreation department. We have custodians that uh, are on duty uh, when we have uh, events, whether they be recreation events or high school events. So we have a, an agreement with Donna, the recreation director, uh, that annually out of their budget, they contribute um, some of the expense for the custodians, for the, you know, the bathrooms that we have, you know, toilet paper, all that sort of thing. So I, I guess that's what- Greg, we pay for the Santa Kings. So I, I don't know, I, Stuart, I guess my question would be to you, if the CPC decides, our local CPC decides to fund this project, are there any um, hurdles or obstacles from the state if, as you say, the CPC decides that it's a worthwhile project to fund and they say go ahead with the funding, do you see any problems from the state side, I guess would be my question. No, there's no, there's no CPA um, police or CPA watchdog. I mean, our organization, I mean, if you stay for my presentation, you'll see that we're a nonprofit educational and training organization on CPA in Boston. So um, we're not a state agency, but there is no state agency, you know, that has to vet or approve local CPA projects. It is, um, even though there's state money in the CPA program, um, you know, about a third of the money right now for CPA projects in East Longmeadow comes from a state trust fund. Um, they consider that money to be local money 
once it hits your account. So when you get the match from the state, it's your money and then the CPC and town meeting, you know, has to go to town meeting, make the decisions on the projects. There's no state oversight on what towns use their money for. It's, it's, a, it's a local program. So we, at Nice Almeida, we have town council and town manager. That's our new form of government, actually about three years old. Um, okay. So again, if CPC, the local East Almeida CPC uh, says, yes, this is a worthwhile project. Yes, it's valuable to the community and we want to fund it. Um, then it's really just up to them to do so. Is that right? It's, it's a, then it goes to town council and, and they vote yay or nay. Right. And so if, since it's come from the town manager as a recommendation, um, I would think the council would, you know, certainly follow that because obviously we all know, let's just be realistic. If you go for a capital project, you have to bond it. But this uh, being a fund for recreation and other historical um, projects, this would be something that would fit right into the recreational portion of it. Um, so if, again, the CPC says, yes, we're willing to fund it, it's, it's, there's no real hurdles to that, I guess is, again, I'm asking the same question. Um, I have a question. Yes, Francis. I'm a new member of this committee and I have not seen our plan or our budget for the year. So um, that would be a consideration for those of you who do know that, those numbers. Um, does our budget allow us to fund this project? So, I, so yeah, so I can answer that. So um, I uh, was having a uh, back and forth with uh, Steve Lonegren, uh, who is the, uh, f I believe, the finance director for the town. Uh, I will be having a meeting with him um, actually tomorrow um, to go over the budget numbers. Unfortunately, the way our, both of our schedules worked out, it unfortunately was after this meeting. I was hoping to chat with him prior um, from the uh, previous budget numbers that I had, which were from February of last year, uh, I had reported them, I think, at the meeting at that point, uh, were pretty healthy numbers. Uh, all four accounts were uh, well into the six figures, uh, and that's not accounting for, and Stuart, correct me if I'm wrong, I know the, the state legislature passed legislation um, early, very early last year, pre-pandemic, um, increasing that trust fund. Uh, that comes in because part of the money is uh, it's a very small amount uh, from each uh, property owner in town as well as uh, state money that comes in um, and we have not had that many projects uh, yet we have two projects that we had approved in October that are still going through the form formal financial process um, and those are the only two last year on, uh, in addition to one that was sort of an amendment or a, or a special situation um, early in the year. So we have not had uh, as many applications um, that we might normally. So um, the other thing I just wanted to say was uh, I, I'm actually glad that, uh, that there's no kind of state restrictions on it because really that was the main reason why I wanted to kind of bring the discussion of whether it's a capital project up or not, because, you know, I, you know, I think this is, uh, and I don't know what the rest of the committee feels, uh, but I'll open it up for questions after uh, this, <clears throat> but uh, I feel that this is a worthy project in a number of ways, because this is a facility that the public uses uh, as well as the uh, students at our high school use. Um, and this is going to be important for preserving it. And the concern that I would have is if something like this doesn't end up happening, then what happens? How would it get funded uh, in the future? Um, so I think uh, the chief concern that I had was I would have hate I would hate to see if you know hypothetically we approve it and then we find out later well that wasn't actually we couldn't actually have approved the money with that. Uh, you know I am. This is still, you know, uh, a lot of us are still fairly new in this process, and it's going to be great to have Stuart on tonight to kind of give a presentation to us and the public at getting a better idea of what the CPC is and what sort of the rules are. Uh, so I wanted to um, reach out to him and have this discussion. So before going forward with both this project and uh, the next two projects this evening. Um, so now what I'll do is um, just I'll open up to the rest of the board if there are any questions to our uh, guests this evening on this project. Yeah, Jonathan, Tony here. Yes. 
Um, Tony Zampuccini, member at large. I've been on the uh, CPC now for about, I don't know, 12 years. Uh, I, I have no problem uh, supporting this project. Seeing some of the other projects that we've been approving. Um, so, yeah, I have no problem moving forward with this. I support it. Um, is there anybody yes, else? Absolutely. I support yes. it as well. What was that? Ralph, I support it as well. I just want to uh, how long will this take? How long will the track be and the field be shut down? I would uh, estimate probably about two weeks, and that's weather dependent, obviously. Oh. <laughs> you know, so, um, and it'll be done during the summer months, Ralph. Thank you. So this one. This is Tom. Okay. Yes, Tom. Uh, so, uh, as, as the sitting person for recreation and the chair for recreation, board. Unfortunately, you know, I represent recreation and this is under the header of recreation. I, I, I don't have anything from my board to represent this, nor was this put in front of the board or in Donna at a recreation meeting. Not that I don't see the value of redoing the track. It's just it's the process and and I can't vote as a sitting person of recreation and represent re recreation without something from recreation board and the recreation department. So would it perhaps be more worthwhile to have recreation also look at this project and sort of have a discussion? So I'm a little confused. So the so does recreation sort of have control over it? Yes, Greg. No, that that was my point. This is not a recreation project. This is a school project. It's a it's under the um, guise of recreation when you talk about CPC funds, right? Because there's three categories: historic, preservation, uh, recreation. So I. I once again, so you're, you're putting it under the guise of recreation, but you don't have a conversation yeah, Tom, with the rec recreation committee doesn't have authority over us requesting a track project through CPC, the school department. And, and I'm not representing recreation. Tom? Hold on. Hold on one minute, guys. Hold right. on one minute. Everyone's talking at once. Yeah, that's um, Jonathan. Yes, Tony. Okay, apparently, is this money going to be coming out of the recreation part? There's four parts to CPC here. You got historical, open space, rec, and housing. Now, where, is, where are we going to take this money out of recreation, correct? For the application, this will be, this is requested out of the public recreation account. Correct. That's, that's the um, account that it will be coming out of. Yes. No problem. So, uh, do you have a rough? Do you have a rough idea what our account is right now at in the rec department? Um, I I don't. I I do know, and I, I if you uh, give me a moment, I can maybe uh, pull those up. These are still numbers from about a year ago, and there hasn't been. There's been only one project that's been actually approved by the town council in that time period, um, and that. Uh, uh, has uh, there's hasn't been spent yet, so those numbers really haven't changed. But each account had, um, I I'm going to say conservatively at least six figures in that. Um, if not, okay. that's that's at the low bottom. Mo I, I believe the undesignated fund had at least a half a million dollars in it. I think it was six hundred. Okay. And don't quote me on that. Uh, and we have not tapped that account for anything uh, thus far. Um, Right. No, I mean, I see no problem with the uh, school department tapping into the rec department because this follows under recreation. Yeah. So what? I'll, so here's what I'll do. So uh, just so we go orderly here. So I'll I'll have Greg finish if he had anything else to say, and then Tom, and then um, and then I think I saw Francis uh, raise her hand as well. So Greg. Yeah, I would just say that um, you know I appreciate the work of the rec commission and their their time they're spent, but it's not really relevant to the school department requesting from CPC 
um, CPC funds for the track improvement. Uh, the authority lies with the school committee to request it and the CPC to either agree to it or to deny it. To have to filter through the Recreation Commission, uh, which is specific to the rec department, um, is not really proper procedure. I know, you know, they're welcome to have their own opinion on it, but I don't know that anyone on the rec commission is a track facility expert. Um, well, so their input is valuable. Nor are you. But they have, but they yeah. have no so, But So, if I can just this finish, is Tom. If I can finish. Who, Tom, Tom, can I finish? No, you go ahead and finish then, Craig. I'll let you, Thank you be the expert. No, I'm not claiming to be the expert. I'm saying that uh, Gail Associates, who we've uh, consulted with, has said that the track is worn out. It's a, um, past its life expectancy. It needs replacement. CPC funds are <laughs> applicable to this project. And so to say that we have to have those folks on the rec commission who volunteer their time, I agree with that, and I'm thankful for that, agree to the project before it comes to CPC is just out of order. That's not how it works. We're the school committee. We asked for a capital project to the town. The town manager, who sees the whole picture of the town, suggested that we come to CPC because she felt the funds may qualify for this. We agreed with that, um, so we put forward the project to CPC. There's no need to go through the rec department or the recreation commission. It's not their purview. If this was a park, if this was center field, yes, rec commission or DPW, perhaps. I don't, you know, I don't even know. But this is specifically. I, I, I appreciate the clarification. So, so, Tom. So this is specifically school you. prop. You've said that multiple times. Now, I'm going to explain my my purpose here. Um, I represent. Can we just tell that Tom my, does not want the project? <laughs> no. My, my, my vote is to represent recreation. It's under the purview of recreation. So I represent a board of people, just like council, you know, the historical committee is represented here and other people are represented here. It goes in front of recreation because I represent recreation on the CPC. So it's under the purview of recreation. I'd like to have them have a chance to have their opinion heard and then I represent them. So I'm just trying to follow protocol, Gregory. I don't think that's why a good wait wait a minute. Uh, the in to good faith, the CPC fine ah, and we faith, won that in in good to, go faith, to, to the board that I represent. I, okay. All right. Thank you. Again. Let's okay. So I have Let's, a point point of order to the chair, please. Yes. Point of order. Yes. Um, this discussion seems to be something we need to have in a commission alone meeting. If it's a question of protocol, it doesn't seem clear. The protocol. I'm a new member, like I said, and I don't really know what is our protocol for using funds, and this isn't the time to discuss that. Yeah. So I would like to ask the the chair to. Uh, clarify this or the order of our discussion right now yeah so uh, so just generally so uh, to what i'm aware of for these rules the um you know we are here to debate deliberate um the uh the applications that come forward so what i like to do is i like to usually talk to the applicant ahead of time which is what i did reaching out to superintendent smith uh, mr feeney just to ask some basic questions about things make sure everybody's on the same page then have uh, a public hearing about it so that the public can see it or is, or is able to, to, to view it or observe it, and in this case, being in a virtual sense. And then what, was tr what traditionally has happened is uh, we have sort of a more private deliberation. Uh, this being virtual, not necessarily the case. Uh, we could, uh, if it's the, the board's pleasure to have another discussion at another meeting or to potentially, you know, um, you know, have that, have that at that time. I am not aware of any specific, I don't know the specific details of the role that recreation plays. It, it's clear, obviously there is a, uh, disagreement about that. Um, but that is that, that disagreement unfortunately does not really have to do a lot with, um, the CPC just, 
the CPC rules. Um, uh, that's more of what has to do with the Recreation Commission specifically, and I am not um, in charge of the Recreation Commission, and I unfortunately am not um, really know uh, uh, the details on that. Uh, hey, Jonathan. Yes, Tony. Okay, I just want to know, is Tom Kane on the, is he, can we vote or no, or is he just filling in tonight for Donna? No, no, no. He he is a he is a voting <laughs> member. He rep he represents the Recreation Commission. Uh, the okay. Recreation Commission voted for him, I believe, at a previous meeting um, All right. to to, re to replace a vacancy. So yes, he is a voting member. I believe he's he's already been sworn in. So everything is official. Okay, I just wanna I just wanna I just wanted to make just wanted to find out whether or not he's the voting one on there. Who are the other people from the Rec Department? Are they here tonight? Not, not that I, I can see uh, in the attendees. I know there's, there's one on them. So, uh, Greg, I'll go back. To you, please. Yeah. Yes, Tom. All right. So my two cents on this is not that I'm trying to represent. I vote for recreation as the person sitting here. Okay. And it's under the purview of recreation. So it's unfair for that recreation group to have me vote on this. So that's my vote, whether it's yes or no, that's irrelevant. I'm just, I'm abstaining from this. John, I'm there's more discussion. I feel that's a little perspective that would help if you want me to. Uh, yes, that actually perhaps would. This might help Greg understand too. Um, so the way the CPA committee is set up, Greg, the legislature had five statutory boards that had to be on the CPC. Historian, it's the four categories of CPA plus the planning board, you know, historic, housing, recreation, and conservation. And when projects in those four CPA categories come before the CPA board, the, the idea is that when the legislature set up CPA, that the whole CPA would then look to the historic person, if it was a historic project and say, tell us what your board thinks of this. You know, what is what is the input from the historic commission? You know, is this is this building a priority or are there other buildings that are more of a priority? You know, are they is the applicant treating this the right way or is the treatment should it be done slightly different? So although you, Greg, have authority or oh, it's on school property, so therefore you're the only board that has authority to do anything on that, and the formal application to the CPC would come to you. Um Tom, as the recreation representative, is the one who would advise the rest of the CPC and say, you know what, we have six parks also that need, um, that need rehab, and our committee feels that the priority should be this, 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 and this. So, you know, or they might say, gee, the track should be absolutely top priority. So, so the recreation committee meets on it, they discuss it, and then Tom brings that opinion back to the rest of the CPC because your application is within the big picture of all the other rec priorities that are in town. So although you're absolutely right, you have authority over that facility and you, and you can apply, um, it, it would behoove you, and, and mo the way most committees operate is that you go and have an informational meeting with the rec commission and explain the project to them and 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 get their support you don't have to have it you know but the cpc is going to look to tom and tom's going to look to bring the advice of the rest of the rec commission to this board before they vote and um and i think what tom's saying is the rec commission doesn't have any knowledge of this project or how it fits into the priorities of the whole town that's the that's i think hopefully that no, i appreciate that perspective Stuart, and i appreciate the clarification has as and i think part of it goes to local control um, and so how the CPC, as I've understood it, has always done things is projects have gone to the CPC and the committee itself has discussed it and they can go to whomever they want for input. If they want to request input from recreation, great. If they don't, great. Um, but because one uh, subcommittee, the Recreation Commission, has other objectives in mind that are not school related, right? Um, does that disqualify school related projects because they're not recreation projects or rec department projects?
from being considered and that's what's happening here right so there's other projects that are considered in town right although there may not be before the committee but this one is before the committee as you've heard multiple members tony ralph have said they are in favor of doing the project because they see value in it so to say that we have to wait for the rec commission which i believe from listening to their meetings they may not get to the point because they've walked the track and think they don't need to resurface it, although Gail and Associates says it does. Um, to say we have to hold up for the rec commission because of a conflict in that, just it disqualifies us from getting a new track through CPC altogether. And why would we hamper the CPC board who has its own authority from making its own decision? I just ask why we would take that control away from CPC and give it to rec. Jonathan, Ms. Brian, can I? interject real quick yes Brian. <laughs> so greg uh, and you and i've known each other a long time my question here is sort of um personal motives and i'm hoping bruce Fenny's still on the line because it wasn't rec commission members that that had walked the track it was cpc members that walked the track after it first came to the board just to see how the track looked at let's say eye surface so um and I didn't hear all of what Bruce said about the, the time frame of the track and the need for the resurface. So at face value, while the track looks like it's in good order, if you're walking it literally recreationally as a citizen, it, Bruce, did you say, what was the time frame that you gave or Gordon? Is it eight to 10 years and we're now in year 11? This is for my own point of clarification. Um, yes. Yeah. That's typically uh, what they recommend uh, due to the wear and tear. Cause there is, there is an aggregate that is in the uh, track surfacing, um, and it is wearing out. So this uh, obviously, uh, um, if it gets any worse, you're going to have slippage and everything else uh, during events. So, there, so thank you. So you're saying it could be safety hazard for the the track runners, both from East Long Meadow and other towns that are using the facility. Yes, if we let it go any further, like you said, if we let it go, um, and I I don't know the exact time frame, a year, year and a half. Of course not. No, I'm not, I'm not asking you to, to say with any like 100% certainty. I mean, right. uh, you know, for probably a bad analogy, you have a car that is supposed to last eight to 10 years, let's say, but it could last 15 or it could last six. So no, that's fine. What you're saying is we're, we're past the window where it's effective. And at this point it, it could become a problem. Yes. And like I said uh, previously as well, if we don't do it now and it gets uh, to a certain point, then we need to actually get down to the asphalt and redo the whole track itself, which is like a quarter of a million dollars, get down to the subsurface and replace that from the, from the bottom up. And, and that's almost double the cost because this is yeah. what, 134? Yes, yes, exactly. Okay, thank you. You got it. Greg, I'll cede my time to you again. Okay, um, so it seems as though there's a bit of a disagreement. Um, I, so at least from my, my vantage point, um, you know, and I, I, I said this previously, you know, I, I definitely see, um, you know, the importance of this project. Um, and I think it fits into the CPC guidelines. But with that being said, I don't want there to be the sense that we're snubbing anybody on the board or anything like that. I, I don't, I don't want to create that sense of hostility. Um, so I just would like to ask the board and maybe try to get some quick reactions. Um, does the board feel that it would be, you know, important for uh, Jonathan is Brian. Here you, Jonathan. Jonathan, it's Brian. Based on what Bruce told me, I, I guess it is important, but I have a follow-up question. It was one that Ralph asked, which is how long will the facility be? Um, what I, I, what I want to do is I, try to, I want to make it the fairest possible process so that everybody on the board feels that they kind of had their voice heard and that nobody felt snubbed. So I don't know if anybody wants to bite on that. I have a point of order. I don't feel comfortable expressing my opinion until we're actually just the, the committee. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I think that this kind of, uh, you know, pre-decision making, I would feel more comfortable being just our committee. We have all the facts we need 
And uh, if no one has any more questions for the representatives. Of uh, the I actually do. I actually do. It did. This is Tom. Chair, may I approach? Uh, Bruce and Gordon. Um, Bruce, you there? Yes. All right. Are we in jeopardy of canceling any track events in the foreseeable future because of the condition of the track? I can't answer that at this time, Tom. Um, I don't know. But we need to resurface it immediately? Excuse me? But we need to resurface it immediately. We need to resurface it very soon, yes. Very soon means? Like in the next, this upcoming year. But we're not in jeopardy of it canceling any events. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a track expert, Tom, to make that kind of um, decision. But we need to replace it immediately. To my understanding, um, at the moment, no, we're not um, in danger of canceling any events. Um, to give you a, a, a sort of a window of another track um, that unfortunately didn't get resurfaced, um, Ludlow has a very similar track. Um, it's older than our track. They were unable to resurface and they are now no longer allowed to hold events. <laughs> you know, when does that happen? Um, obviously we can't put an exact window of time on that, but we do know based on Gale Associates that we're in that window of resurfacing or as Bruce has been telling us, getting into a more dangerous situation. And possible. Um, Jonathan, through the chair, it's Brian. One other question. Yes, and Brian. sorry to keep, keep asking all these, but okay. um, indoor track is going to fall into what's known as the Fall Sports 2, which starts, I believe, Greg, is that beginning of April? March. March. Okay. And then fall, and then outdoor track is going to start shortly after the completion of indoor track. So realistically, the indoor track team could be using the outdoor track facilities for training. Obviously, I don't want anybody on this call to you know, answer any questions for, for the coaches. Um, but if we resurface the, the track facilities, is this going to be done during the school year or are we looking to do it over the summer? I, I think I can't speak for Bruce, but uh, generally we do uh, school projects during the summer if possible. That's correct. Okay. Jonathan. Okay. Yes, Tony. Thank you. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I've heard enough tonight. We know the track needs to be repaired. Uh, I want to make a motion that we move forward and vote on this tonight. Okay. Is everyone um, agreeable with it? I'm, I'm going to just table that just for one second, only because I see Lynn's hand has been raised for the last few minutes, and I'm not sure she spoke on this yet, so I just want to give her the opportunity. Okay. Yep. Uh, a li little bit. Uh, you might need to speak up a little bit. All right. Um, I had two questions. Yes. One is, um, I feel like to make a decision. I do want to see um, the budget. The other thing is, I do know, um, I believe I heard that uh, Lynn? Yes? Are you on your phone or on a computer? On a computer. Can you, can you I get, can't understand you. You have to get as close as you can to your microphone, please. Okay. Is this better? Can you hear me any better? No. No, it's very difficult. It's impossible to understand. Maybe what you could do, Lynn, is perhaps uh, you can type it chat. in the chat. And then um, I believe that'll also be entered into the record or so that people will be able to see that. Um, chat. Yeah, there's a, there's a chat function okay. that, you could, that you could use. Um, okay. Um, can you hear me okay? Still it's still a, a, quite difficult. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, there's one question. Um, uh, 
Lynn, do you see where the chat is? Yeah. On the bottom there? Yeah. So you click on chat. And then if you go to all the panelists, so then we would all see it. Here, I'll type, I'll chat to her in a second. Okay, so how can this be? Oh, it's Tom. Okay, the question from Tom. So I'm not sure if. Um, I was saying this to Tom K. All right. So, with this, the question that Tom just typed out, was this your question, Lynn? Um, no. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. The, I guess the, the joys of technology, right? <laughs> yeah, it seems like... Oh. Well, look, my question was, if it could not be read or not everybody sees it, is how can this be a recreational project if the school department just said it was a school project? But it involves recreation, doesn't it? Don't you think it falls under the category of recreation? It doesn't follow under open space or historical or housing. It's got to follow under recreational. It is recreational. So, so Tony, yeah. fees, have been, Tony, fees have been charged for the last eight years for, for the facility use by lacrosse programs that are out of town and everything else. Where is that money gone? Uh, apparently, it's going toward that track. If I if I understood them correctly, under advertising and whatnot. Yeah, that's right. Uh, the the fees that were rental fees go directly for the uh, for this project. So, so I mean, you know, it's it's really hard when Rick and the school department or someone else can't come together here. You know, it's for the town's people. Let's look at it that way. And the money has to come out of the rec department budget. I don't. Can't come out. It can't I, come. Where, where would you Where would you suggest we take this money out of? It can't come out of the other three, so it's got to come under recreational. Well, and it is recreational. If the town is allowed to use it and the gates aren't locked and the lights are on. Okay, yes, it's it's just like your park. It's like Heritage Park. Yeah, it closes at dusk. It, it, Tony, can use it. Tony, it's not my park; it's our park, and well, well, tonight I've been listening, and more or less, it's your money. It's recreational. Yeah. Uh, it's under the right. purview of recreation. So, if I'm voting, this is just my two cents. If I'm voting for mm -hmm. it to represent recreation, I just think recreation would need Donna and the group would need to be able to hear from the school department and, and, and list it as a priority, just like Stuart said. So, I mean, jumping the gun to make a vote on this tonight might not be the best interest for everybody. That's all. Well, let's put it to a vote. Let's find out. I still got a motion on the floor. I'm waiting for a, a second. A Nobody's second. Well, because we... All right, there it is. We have a second. Jonathan. Yes. All right, we have a second. Let's put it to a vote. Okay. All right. Can we get to discuss before we vote? Well, well, all right. Is there any more discussion? I mean, we've been discussing this for like no, almost an hour. I've been saying I, that. I, I think that's respectful. Still, I feel we still don't sure. have the facts. I'm not ready to come to a vote. Because you you have, you have committee members that don't even have don't even have the paperwork in front of them. You have committee members that weren't even on this to to vote, didn't even receive the paperwork. Well, for me, the main thing is two things. I don't have the budget information, which is what Lynn said. Second of all, I don't understand the role of the rec department in all of this because we're using or we're proposing to use recreation funding. And this is probably not the place to get that information because I'm a new member. So if I had that information and it was clear, 
maybe I'd be ready to vote, but I am not ready to vote. Okay, I'm going, I'll, I will recognize Greg and then I wanna, uh, I have some things to say uh, after Greg. Yeah, just, Jonathan, I just wanna clarify. So we're talking recreation, uh, which is the category within CPC. There's a difference between CPC funds, uh, recreation designation versus recreation department funding, which is our with, within our budget. So just to clarify, CPC funds are CPC funds, which is what we're requesting. Within the CPC funds, there's four separate categories that it has to fit into. Because people go to the track and recreate, then it goes to recreation within CPC. It has nothing to do with the recreation department funding, just to separate the two. Thank there you. is also a fifth account undesignated fund. So, um, okay, so it, it, what I'm seeing here is so we have a motion on the table, an up or down vote, yes or no. Um, I believe in the merits of this proposal, but I'm very, I'm concerned personally about moving forward only because, you know, there are now not just one, but now there's three members that have hesitancy, not necessarily opposed to hesitancy moving right at this evening. Uh, and unfortunately, and, you know, I, you know, had unable due to schedules, just being able to secure those budget numbers for this evening's meeting. Um, and I, I was not privy to some of this recreation discussion. Uh, Jonathan, it's Brian. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I'm, I'm fine to move forward at this point. Okay. My questions have been answered. So what we'll do is we will go to a vote uh, right now. Um, there's a motion but, on the table. One point of order, Jonathan. Yes, Brian. Um, I, I'm more concerned for our new member who's not comfortable voting. I mean, we can vote and it very well could pass, but if she's not comfortable voting until she gets the budget numbers, uh, it's your call. You're the chairman. Yeah. So there's there's a motion on the table right now. So we have to, and, and it's and it's gotten a second. So we have to move Fair. with that vote. And then so everybody can sort of express their view on just the situation as it is. Uh, Greg, I will lay you uh, one more question, and then I, I want to move forward with this. Yeah, I'm just a little concerned here because if if we go to a vote and this fails, are we done for good? Because I feel like there's some sort of consensus that the project is worthwhile. There's just other questions. So I just want to make sure that if we vote tonight and it doesn't pass, this isn't the end of it uh, because I, I, I'm getting the feeling like there's consensus that we can do this. But I, don't, I just don't know how this vote's going to go. So I just wanted to put that out there. Thank you. Uh, Stuart, I'm not sure if you're still on, um, I'm, uh, if you have uh, perhaps an opinion. So I, th this, is, this is the way, so you know, we, have, we have a motion on the floor. This is, this is what I'm a little worried about. I, I feel personally uncomfortable moving forward just because, not necessarily because of my personal opinions, but just reflecting the rest of the board, uh, not oh. it, just one person, but it's multiple people at this point. Um, if this were to be voted down, w would it be able to come back? Or, you know, I'm, just, I'm a little confused by process and I, I don't want to, um, you know, ha have a vote that doesn't co really completely reflect the committee or committee members that maybe might at some point be in favor, but are just concerned uh, about a, a couple questions that unfortunately can't be answered this evening. Yeah, that, it could definitely come back. I mean, up until the point that, you know, up until the point that the warrant closes, you know, you can make recommendations um, to town meeting right up until the point the warrant closes. So, you know, if someone made a motion to bring it back, a absolutely. There's no, it's, you know, there's no reason why if it is defeated tonight that once the information was obtained by everyone that wants to see it and then you schedule the vote. I mean, normally CPC has all these discussions with all the applicants and then has a meeting scheduled for their votes for town meeting. Um, it, it sounds like you don't have that type of schedule. Was it on the agenda tonight to vote on this or just to discuss it? It, it was, it was just, it was to discuss. Um, but obviously every committee member here is privileged to be able to bring a motion up as long as it has a second. Uh, we had a brief discussion in December, but there were questions that needed to be answered then. And then a, a number of those questions were answered at that point. And then this evening, it, it appears that there are, there were 
some more questions that hadn't been discussed at the previous meeting. Normally when you vote on something, you everyone knows they're going to vote that night and it's on the agenda that a vote is going to take place because usually that's an important, important thing for people, um, either guests to attend or, um, or committee members who might not be able to make it in, you know, who want to know whether something's going to be voted on. So, like I said, usually there's, there's these discussions that happen with applicants and you invite them and everyone talks about it. Um, and then at one meeting, it's posted, you know, that you're going to vote on all the recommendations all at once, because usually they all fit together in the budget, right? Because if you just vote on them piecemeal as things come along, you know, and not knowing what your budget is, um, you know, you might, you might run out of money. So that's why usually it's always the votes all are taken at once when everyone has the budget information in front of them um, and you vote on everything together. Thank you. That's been my concern. My concern is that we are not looking at our plan or our budget and we're voting on this as we're consulting with the people involved. I, I need more time or to meet with the chair and understand the process because this doesn't make sense to me. Enter your meeting ID. Okay, so okay. without it, without the, we have to vote, I understand that. Yes, without the vote being much longer, uh, just dragging it out, let's let's take a vote and then, and then we can move forward at that point. Uh, so what I will do is, uh, so this is just that the public is aware, this is a vote, uh, yes or no, uh, to approve the uh, East Long Middle High School track resurfacing project. Um, so, uh, so I will take Lynn's uh, uh, comment as a abs abstaining. Lynn, is that an abstention? I'm not going to vote. Oh. Oh, I can't, unfortunately. Okay, so I'm going to go just from the way I see it on my computer here, everybody down. Uh, Ralph? I'm sorry, but the computer went off and I went to my phone and just came back and missed something. What's the question? Uh, the question is what? the question is to approve or to yes or no on the high school track project. Yes. Uh, Francis. Abstain. Um, Lynn is an abstention. Tom. Abstain. Brian. Yes. And I am uh, a no. So um, that is so, okay, so we had four abstentions, two yes, two yeses, one no. You forgot me, Jonathan. Oh, yes, Tony. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry. You weren't in my list and I, I apologize. Thank you. It's okay. I vote yes. Is that a four to one vote, uh, Mr. Chairman? That is, so that is. I don't is, think others should have the right to interfere when we're voting, excuse yeah, me. Uh, so, okay, so that is three votes in favor, one no vote for abstention, uh, three abstentions. Fine. Who are the three abstentions, excuse me? So that would be Francis, Lynn, and Tom. Okay, thank you. And then, yes, Tony, Ralph, and Brian. Uh, Stuart, um, I just, I'm going to need your help on procedure again, or if somebody can help me. So does that mean it passes or it, it doesn't pass? I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm very confused. I, and I'm the chairman, so uh, I, I apologize. You need a majority of your quorum tonight to vote yes. So how many people on your committee are here Seven. tonight? that are in attendance. Right, so it would take four to pass the project. Okay, so, okay, so seeing that, so it has been tabled. So what I will say to this, uh, I plan on bringing this back and having a discussion on it. Um, the reason I voted the way I voted was, I, I just feel very uncomfortable in that the committee is this narrowly divided. Um, it shouldn't be, a, a narrow vote and you know 
this level of committee members feeling, you know, concerned about or, or having problems with the process. So, you know, that is, that is a promise that I have. I'm going to, you know, we're going to get the budget numbers. Maybe we can have a private session after our, our guests uh, uh, from the application leave this evening and we can get these other questions answered. Uh, I think this has been, um, you know, a lot of questions were asked, were answered, and we will um, figure out the answers to those other questions. And there will be a vote on, I plan on bringing this back and a vote on this at our next meeting, which will be the first Thursday in March. Uh, hopefully at that point, um, both the rec recreation side of it, the budget issue, and whatever other issues come back up so that everybody feels that they are comfortable with voting. Um, so uh, with that, uh, to Bruce, Greg, and uh, Superintendent Smith, uh, I appreciate your time, your patience, um, a little bit of a, a ro roller coaster ride here. Um, but I appreciate uh, your ability to answer the questions uh, and give the committee insight. So I thank you very much for that. To approach the chair? Yes, Tom. All right. So my question is to Stuart, if he's still available. Yes, he is. And, and Stuart, does this mean we can still vote at the next meeting for the project itself? Oh, yeah. Yeah, anyone okay. can make I mean, even if it, um, you know, until the – until the warrant closes, the CPC can send recommendations to um, to town council. Or do you have a particular meeting that town council votes on all your CPA projects? Not that I'm aware of. We, we do not. We do it on a little bit of a rolling basis then. You just yes. send it to the council as, yeah. So we can That's talk correct. about that in, or during presentation. Most, most CPCs do have you know, a formal cycle. Applications are due at this point. The CPC has the applications in, they discuss it, they vote and send it all to the town council at once. Um, just a, a style of doing it. Um, but, um, and Stuart, we, we did set up a, a, a deadline uh, for applications, but I don't think we did a deadline for specific uh, approvals. Right. And I, I'm sorry, I keep, I keep thinking of East Longmeadow as a, as a town, as I'm saying warrant and town meeting, but you guys have, uh, you, you threw a uh, monkey wrench in it by becoming a uh, city form of government. So um, we're still a town, Stuart. We just yeah. have a town, town council. But you have a, yeah, that's a city form of government though. So, yeah. Okay. So um, seeing that there uh, is no other uh, questions uh, remaining. Um, on this. So, uh, I, uh, thank you again. Yes, uh, Mr. Thompson, Mr. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity to discuss the project with you. We appreciate it. And uh, welcome. Any opportunity to come back and discuss it? Yeah, I'm hoping uh, for our next meeting, um, these these things, these issues will be fleshed out and we'll be able to uh, move forward on things. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for your time. Uh, you know, we're all one town. We're looking for right. the same thing to make uh, our community as, as good as it can. And uh, that's all we're trying to do. So appreciate your time tonight. Thank you, everybody. All right. Um, so what we'll do now is we will go uh, back in order from uh, our, our previous um, agenda topic, uh, Stuart, uh, uh, which he is giving us, I think, a very vitally important presentation, particularly with um, in relation to our last, uh, our most pre this previous discussion, uh, and just kind of, you know, my hope was, and you know, when Stuart brought this up to me um, uh, via email uh, a couple weeks back, uh, you know, I really jumped at the opportunity of doing something like this. Uh, you know, I've been on this board now for since uh, the fall of 2019, but just. Uh, COVID and um, the, you know, certain delays and, you know, limitations and things. Uh, we have not had, unfortunately, been able to have a, a lot of meetings or things. And we've, the board has also kind of shifted, um, you know, certain members have left, members have, you know, some members have stayed on. Um, so there's been a lot of uh, movement and, um, you know, certainly, you know, very new members, uh, particularly. So, 
what I'm hoping is, uh, so I'll throw the, uh, the uh, to, to Stuart now for his presentation. Um, I think you're able to screen share, um, Mr. Mackey. I think he's able to. Uh, yeah, you should be outside. Oh, fantastic. See that right? How's that look for everybody? Great. It looks great, Stuart. Okay, good. Yeah, thank you. All right. Um, thanks for having me. And um, um, my presentation is short, so um, that's good. After after you have a long discussion, I'm sure you're all rapidly approaching the time limit that you want to devote to this tonight. So. Um, I will say that I'm happy to do this presentation interactively. So if questions come up along the way, just chime right in. Um, I think it works better that way uh, rather than saving your questions uh, till the end. And um, if you also want to kick around a little bit, it's not, I don't have a slide for it in this presentation, the, the annual cycle of a CPC, it seems like you might benefit from having a little more structure to that. So you know exactly, you know, everyone knows exactly when they're going to be voting on projects and, because um, I think Francis made a good point. It does get awkward when you're, when you're, um, you know, uh, have to vote right after you've, you know, as soon as you've heard about a presentation that quickly. Um, usually there's, there's a good time to ask for more information and then uh, to have all your votes at one meeting. So we can talk about that a little bit. Um, so quickly, for those of you that don't know us, um, our organization is a nonprofit based in Boston, but we're really just a combobulation of all these other nonprofits that work in the housing, historic, open space, and recreation area. They all sit on our steering committee. Um, we also have um, folks on our steering committee from eight uh, CPCs across the state, um, similar to East Longmeadow, and six at-large members. And the steering committee meets um, quarterly to sort of set the agenda for uh, what the coalition is going to do during the year and what things do we do well here's a kind of an overview of what our organization does um, we provide a lot of technical assistance and you know uh, uh, tony knows that and john has um called or emailed but if anyone ever has questions in your town whether it be on the cpc or anyone we're happy to talk to folks and, and provide them information on cpa um, i'm going to show you our website in a second because i think it has some great information for you as members to the of the committee um hopefully you're all getting our newsletter um that we send out periodically i think our most recent issue went out maybe on monday of this week so if for some reason you're not um let me know we'll make sure that um, you're on our newsletter list um, we do a lot of work on beacon hill and we're going to talk about that tonight because one of the things we did last year was um dramatically increase the matching money that's coming to you folks um, we also help communities adopt CPA, new communities that are interested in the program, and we do conferences, training, webinars, presentations like this one. Um, we have a number of funding sources, you know, like a traditional nonprofit. We get um, our operating revenue from applying to foundations for grants, um, but the vast majority of our um, uh, budget each year comes from dues paid by community preservation committees like yourself out of your administrative budget to help support having a statewide organization that works on your behalf. So we really thank you very much for being uh, members of the coalition. So this is our website, communitypreservation.org. Um, and um, uh, we redid it last year. Um, we keep it up to date and put news articles and information and stories up there. You know, every week there's new fresh information on there. But what I want to call your attention to is the tab along the top that's circled there in red, technical assistance. That brings up a big giant menu there. And these are the things really designed that we've placed on our website designed to help community preservation committees. So if you ever have a little bit of additional time or if you're looking for some information on a particular aspect of CPA, or you have an open, open space issue or a recreation issue or the Secretary of Interior Standards on historic projects, you can see that we have big categories here about uh, tons of information on CPA. So um, this is really designed for you, this section of our website for CPCs to learn more about um, CPA. So Francis, you know, spend some time here as a new member of the committee. I will. Thank you. I think it'll be very, very helpful to you. I will do that. Thank you. All right. So what's happening in CPA out in the world? You know, you guys are obviously meeting all the time and talking just about Long East Longmeadow, but it's kind of neat that there are 186 other community preservation committees that are meeting 
um, you know, once, twice a month doing the exact same thing that you are doing. Um, and, uh, you know, we have um, more than half the municipalities in the state have adopted CPA. We're up to 53% of the cities and towns. But because we've had a lot of cities join lately, um, we're actually um, covering 65% of the population. So 65% of Massachusetts lives in a community that has um, CPA, which is pretty terrific. Um, the stat I love the most about CPA is that last one on the page that no community has ever left the program. Um, so, you know, kind of a testimony to how cool this program is and how much it helps communities. Everyone who's ever joined the program, you have a right to revoke after five years and get out of the program. And we've never had a community revoke CPA. So it really is an amazing program and incredibly popular across the state. Um, this is my favorite map of Massachusetts. It shows all the CPA communities in green um, that are towns and all the cities that are in orange. Um, so uh, I interesting enough, you guys are known as a town, but you have a city form of government, right? If you have a town council, that's considered a right. city form of government. So, but we still kept you in green there because Usually towns that convert to cities, they still want to be known as, you know, the cute little town of East Longmeadow. So, so we still consider you a town, but um, that's why I forget sometimes you have a town council and a, and a city form of government. Um, we did have 10 new communities that adopted last year in 2020. Um, you'd think after 20 years, CPA was passed in, in, 19, uh, in 2000. You'd think after 20 years, you know, all the communities that were interested in it, would have passed already, but you know, we still had 10 new communities last year. I had to, there were so many, I had to make a cheat sheet because I realized I'd forget them all because usually folks want to know. Um, out in the western part of the state, West Stockbridge and Lee both joined CPA last year. Um, Framingham and Greenfield uh, were two cities, and Franklin, those were the three cities that joined last year. Um, and then the other towns that voted to adopt CPA were Lancaster, Milton, Hopedale, Greenfield, uh, I mentioned Greenfield, their city, Whitman and Shrewsbury. So those were the 10 that joined last year. Um, a lot of them are small. So, you know, obviously when a, a new community joins CPA, um, we all share that trust fund. So, you know, it can have an impact on the trust fund. Um, uh, we're going to talk about the trust fund in a second, but most of these communities with the exception of Framingham, um, we're really on the, on the smaller side. So the impact on the trust fund is really not going to be that dramatic from, from last year's uh, class that adopted CPA. So um, people are always kind of interested in what CPA has done statewide. Um, and it's pretty astounding. Any way you look at it, this program has been a huge success for, for the Commonwealth. Um, the historic preservation category is the most popular among CPA. We've had about a little over 12,000, almost 13,000 projects, and about half of them have been in the historic preservation category. Um, that doesn't mean the most money has been spent on historic projects because they tend to be a little smaller. Um, as a matter of fact, the money rolls up pretty evenly across the different categories of CPA uh, across the state. Um, we're close to 32,000 acres of open space that's been protected. Um, I think you guys bought a piece of open space at one point. Um, outdoor recreation is kind of a hot category of CPA now. It's certainly the hot category in, in East Longmeadow. Uh, and uh, some changes were made to the law in 2012, um, you know, that made it easier for communities to do rec projects. Before 2012, you could not have spent any money resurfacing that track. The way the law was written in the beginning you could only build new recreational facilities or buy land for new recreational facilities. You couldn't fix up the ones you already had uh, until 2012. And we worked with the legislature and um, showed them how the recreation category was kind of broken in CPA. Most folks didn't want to build new soccer fields or buy land for new soccer fields. They already had 15 of them and they were just dilapidated and in terrible shape and they had no money to fix them up. So it really made sense to expand in that category. Um, and uh, lo and behold, you know, now you get applications um, based on that work that we did in 2012 to expand that category. And uh, it's been very popular. And uh, we're up over 20,000 units of affordable housing that have been created or supported with CPA. So you roll it all up, 
um, between the local money and the state matching money, um, CPA has raised $2.5 billion. When you think about it, that is a lot of money and a lot of CPA projects um, in, just, in just 20 years. So um, the trust fund is something that I want to explain to everyone because it's the best part about CPA. Um, I think without the state trust fund, I don't know if anyone would have adopted CPA, right? You can always raise your taxes by 1% and put it into a pot to do projects. But the real magic of CBA is that when you adopt a, a local surcharge and tax yourself, you get this matching money from the state. And it is a guaranteed uh, trust fund, a true trust fund that is administered by the Department of Revenue. Uh, the money comes from fees that are charged on documents when they're filed with the Registry of Deeds. So when someone steps to the window at the registry and files uh, a mortgage or um, a mortgage discharge or a plot plan or a deed, whatever they're turning in at the registry to be filed, there's a fee for that. Um, and $20 of that fee used to be dedicated to the CPA trust fund. Um, it's been the same $20 fee on documents for 20 years. And so we already lost about half of that money to attrition. So uh, in 2008, actually, we started asking the legislature to raise that fee. And it took us 12 years to convince the legislature to do it. Um, but we finally were successful in the summer of 2019. And the um, uh, legislature changed that $20 fee on documents to $50. Um, so it had to be a pretty big jump to make up for the fact that they hadn't raised it in 20 years. Um, there is a separate fee for municipal lien certificates that used to be uh, $10 and now it's 25. But the vast majority of documents that are filed at the registry, there's a $50 um, piece of the fee that people pay that goes to CPA it goes right to the trust fund at DOR. And the only thing that can be done with that money is to pay it out to you as a match every November. Um, statutorily, the state can't spend it on anything else. It's not subject to appropriation by the legislature or the state budget. It's automatic. The money comes into the trust fund and it goes out to the CPA communities every, every November. And so last year, the based match, um, this was the first year that we had those new fees in place. And so you received 28.6% of what you raised locally. Um, Jonathan, do you happen to know how much money you raised locally or in, in East Longmeadow? That's, that's a, a very good question. We'll, we'll find that out when you're meeting don't tomorrow. I have the answer to that, but I sh will have the answer to that. Yeah. Um, in any case, let's say it was um, $100,000. I know it's more than that, but if a community had raised $100,000 locally, they would have gotten a $28,600 check from the, from the trust fund in November. Um, I think your revenue is probably somewhere in the $500,000 range locally, um, plus, plus the match money. But I, I can look that up in a second too. Um, and next year, believe it or not, I think the, the trust fund will actually be a little higher. Um, the real estate market has been going crazy. Um, we keep a chart on our website of how much money comes into the trust fund each month. The Department of Revenue reports, reports it monthly. And um, the, the real estate activity has been, you know, just outstanding. Um, so uh, in 2021, that'll be the first year that we have 12 full months of these higher fees being collected. That 28% match only was 10 months of the new fee and two months of the old fee. So it fully kicks in from November, 2021. So I think we probably even could get, you know, a little over 30% even, um, all things being equal. And if the real estate market holds up um, uh, next November. So it's a, it's a good time to be in CPA now that we got uh, the legislature to increase that fee. Any questions on the trust fund? All right, um, so I wanted to talk about the, the budgeting process and it's good that you're gonna examine your budget at the next meeting um, because this is the time of year when everyone does budgets, right? General municipal budgets and, and CPA project, budgets are all done around this time of year. Um, and every year you have to present a budget to the town council. Um, and it does require a vote at your committee and a recommendation from your committee. Um, to the town council. 
And um, your budget um, is based on what you expect to collect in the next year from your local revenue, your 1% surcharge, and then an estimate of what you're going to get next November. So you'd be working right now, starting to work on the FY22 budget. Um, and at some point this spring, um, you'll present that to your town council and they will, they will vote on that. Um, so your total budget is based on those two figures, what you collect locally, and then the trust fund match that you get on top of that. So feel free to stop me or, or jump in anytime you want um, to ask questions on this. So of the total amount of money you have available to every year, the rules of CPA say you have to spend or reserve 10% of that total pot for historic preservation, 10% for open space and recreation. Those two categories share a reserve account. There's actually not four reserve accounts, there's only three. Open space, meaning conservation land, and recreation are one reserve account. Uh, and housing is the other one. And the rule is spend or reserve. So for example, if you go ahead and do the track project this year, um, that $134,000, I think I heard people say, is probably more than 10% of your total budget. Um, we don't know that right now because you're not gonna find out your budget information till tomorrow. But if you go ahead and do that, that satisfies the open space and recreation spending, right? The rule is every year you have to spend or reserve 10%. So you don't have to put 10% into your open space and recreation reserve this year, if you do the track project, that project would be your, your requirement for that category. But if you have no housing projects, and I don't think you got any housing applications this year, you would have to put in your budget 10% of your total revenue to go into the housing reserve. Does that make sense? All right. Um, you can also set aside some money for administrative funds, up to 5% of, um, uh, of what you take in, in total. And then the balance, this big blue section of 65%, that's your own designated money. And you can spend that any way you want. You could spend that all on a historic project, all on an open space project. You can um, hang on to that, you know, and there's no requirement that you spend everything every year that you take in. Your money sits in an account until you spend it. So it, it's not like a, a regular town budget account where if the school committee doesn't spend their whole budget, they lose it at the end of the year. It's not, not like that with CPA. If you um, don't spend everything you have coming in, that money still sits in the undesignated fund is, is available to you the next year. All right. So um, what does a, a budget look like? Um, uh, and I don't know what format you use. Everyone uses a different format for their budget article that they present in front of the, um, in front of the council. Um, but, you know, if you had, let's say, $500,000 in revenue that you anticipated between the local surcharge and the state matching money, you would have to give the council a, a budget for that. Um, and you'd ask for $50,000 to go into the housing reserve 50,000 into the historic reserve and 50,000 into the open space and recreation reserve. Um, you also could set aside 5% for administrative. Then you have your projects that you might do like the, the um, historic projects that are in front of you or the track projects. And if you don't spend everything, if, if you're not recommending to the council that you're going to spend that full, let's say $500,000 using that as an example, you want to put the rest in what's called a budgeted reserve. Do you folks use a budgeted reserve? Do you use that type of accounting? Probably not sure, right? Yeah, that's no. something. I know, we, I know we have an undesignated account. Right. That's, that's the savings account um, from previous years. Every year that you have leftover money, it goes in your undesignated savings account. Um, but there's also something called the budgeted reserve, so may I approach here? What what do we have in undesignated funds as we speak, Chair? Uh, I I know it is a uh, I I don't have an exact figure, but I know it's a substantial level of money. I I believe it is at least uh, half a million dollars. 
over five hundred so, thousand. So, I believe sure. it, it, my my point with the whole recreation thing, if it's under the purview of recreation, then it should have a conversation with recreation see if it fits just like Stuart just said. But if it came in as undesignated, it's undesignated. It's it's kind of like a, a cash kitty uh, to to do as you wish. Am I correct, Stuart? Yeah, you can use that undesignated money for, for any category. Now, Stuart, can we use that undesignated for a, let's say we, we, own, we have brown property under the purview of recreation. It was purchased for recreation open space. Uh -huh. And then we needed to improve, we have a barn that we'd love to put a skating rink in. And we needed to improve the structure of that barn. Um, would that be available funding for open space or recreation? Unfortunately, no, because CPA is, um, and actually this is later on in the presentation, but CPA is for outdoor recreational only. Um, the recreation category is actually a subset of open space. Um, so it's things like, you know, the traditional conservation land, fields, forests, farms, you know, riverfront property, wetlands, and that sort of thing. And active recreation, parks, playgrounds, athletic fields, community gardens, mm -hmm. board parks. But skating um, if it was an outdoor skating rink, no problem. Um, but you'll see in the definition of recreational use in the CPA legislation, it says no stadium structures or similar, or, or no stadiums, no horse racing, dog racing, stadium yep, yep. or similar structures. So uh, where we have a barn that's open air because it's covered, would that be, in, would that, like, let's say it just has a roof. It's an old school open space barn that has no sides to it. But oh. it just has a roof, like a, like a, like a, um, like a pavilion kind of, yeah, like a pavilion. Oh yeah. That would be fine. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. All right. Yeah. yeah I'm hoping my recreation members are hearing this. <laughs> um, yeah, it can't be a, an enclosed uh, building. Um, so, um, that would probably be okay. So like, let's say it's a, an old barn, the side walls are off, but it has chicken wire. So nothing gets damaged inside, but it still has a roof. It has the old, uh, you know, the barn, but the side walls are gone. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think that's okay. It's kind of hard to say without looking at the structure and the property. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if it's, uh, you couldn't build that with CPA money, um, mm -hmm. but you're not really building the barn structure. You're building the surface underneath, right? Correct. So, so we currently have an ice skating rink that's out at one of our, our, our town fields, parks, or whatever we want to call it. And, you know, we'd like to bring it under our roof so the sun doesn't hit it during the day and melt it. Yep. So, and we'd like to use it at this open space recreation that we purchased under open space and recreation probably 10 years ago that has never been really utilized. Right. What's the name of that property? Is that the one you purchased with CPA funds? Yeah, that's the old brown property. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, that's, that's, I think, the only piece of land you bought with CPA funds, I think. Um, yes, I think yeah. you're right. Yeah, the, oh, the browning, browning Koch or Coke? Uh, yeah, the brown Coke, I think it is Koch. Yeah, yep. 2000, wrote, I actually wrote that down. Um, yeah, so... Um, yeah, that's, that sounds okay. I mean, it, it, it's tough to say without looking at the picture and the plan and all that, but um, you're just building, if you're just building the rink and you're not building a structure above it, if that structure is already there and it's not considered an indoor rink, you know, with heating and air conditioning and doors, I think that sounds okay. Now, the other question I have is because, you know, our, our facilities are, like the track is, you know, needs probably repair down a road. But part of that facility itself, the turf field and the track, need restrooms and, and kind of a snack shack. Is that something that could be utilized for CPC undesignated? Um, either the undesignated or the, or the open space and recreation reserve, yeah. Um, when they say structures, um, they mean large structures like a gymnasium. A oh, 
Thank you for the clarification because I think I think a lot of the people in town have, have been under the impression that we could not build a a restroom. We use Santa cans. That's you probably heard that the recreation pays for Santa cans at, at the turf field. So, you know, I think having a Santa can slash snack shack, a small little facility. So that that's that's a possibility here. Yeah, if it's if it directly serves the outdoor recreational use, in other words, no recreation is going on inside of it, but it's there to serve the outdoor recreation, that's okay. You know, something small. So the three examples you usually see are a bathroom, yeah. um, a snack shack, or yeah. a storage shed. Those are the yeah. three kind of structures that directly so. serve the outdoor recreational facility. But if you built it, with an office in there, you know, or a community room, that would not be okay because then things are happening inside the structure. That's a full structure. No, um, and I, I think the school department, knowing that information, and hopefully they're still listening, understand where maybe some of these dollars could be repurposed instead of the track immediately. Maybe we utilize that for a snack shack slash restrooms instead of renting Santa cans every year. Yep, that that could be done. Yep. That's amazing. Thank you very much, Stuart. I, I defer back. Thank you. All right. So the budget will probably make a little more sense, John, once you've gotten the figures from your town accountant. Um, and then, you know, you and I can have a conversation before your next meeting and kind of work on this year's budget. Yeah, that would be, that would be extremely sense. helpful. Yep. Okay. Great. All right. Um, so for some reason, my... Okay, there we go. Um, so one thing I wanted to talk about in terms of also your, your budget and your project planning um, is, to, is to, and this, and this goes a little bit to the school conversation that you guys were just having, although not quite as much, um, but there's, there's really two budgets in a town and you really think of them, you should think of them as, as separate. You know, there's the town, the regular town budget um, and a town budget is really, you know, a top down affair. You know, there's really very little opportunity for a regular citizen in East Longmeadow to have too much input into the town budget. You know, it's the finance committee, it's the town manager, it's the town council, um, the department heads. You know, regular citizen really can't have too much input into the town budget. It's really a top-down thing. But CPA is designed to be exactly the opposite. It's designed to be a bottoms-up approach. Um, you know, that 1% surcharge the ideas come from the community at wide. It's, it's everyone's fund. You all voluntarily agreed to tax yourself this extra 1%. Um, and the ideas should come from everybody. Um, and that's why you have a public hearing every year. Hopefully, you know, you're supposed to do that. You get input from the public. Uh, people can submit applications. People can come up with great ideas. This is a quality of life program that in the fund belongs to the community. And the the cities and towns that kind of operate this their program this way are the ones that really have great success. Um, but a lot of times there's pressure from the town budget people um, to move some of their expenses over to you um, because there's always pressure on the town budget, right? There's never enough money for fire, police, schools, roads. Um, and, um, you know, CPA is not designed to replace the town budget. It's a quality of life program for the things that didn't fit in the town budget. Um, so it's good to remember that and to remind folks in town of that. It's really a community fund for quality of life, new initiatives, as opposed to replacing um, the way the town ordinarily does business. And um, the process should be quite different too. All right. Um, so, this is a little bit more, Tom, of what you were talking about, of what you can actually do with CPA funds in the, in the different categories. Um, and um, this is really helpful for folks to look at this particular chart. Does anyone recognize this chart at all? This is called the CPA Allowable Uses Chart. And there is a copy of it on our website in that technical assistance section. Um, but this basically tells you what you can and can't do with CPA funds. And there's a paragraph in the CPA legislation, it's paragraph 5B2, 
that tells you what you can do with your money. But it's this long legalese gobbledygook paragraph, you know, your committee can make recommendations for the acquisition, creation, and preservation of open space. And the rehabilitation of open space if it was acquired or created with CPA funds. And it goes on throughout all the categories. And honestly, you know, it was very hard in the beginning when communities passed CPA in 2000 to know what the heck they could spend their money on. Um, and then the Department of Revenue came out with this simplified chart, and it was kind of like a light bulb went off in everyone's house, uh, uh, everyone's head. So um, we really would recommend you kind of print out this chart and always keep it with you because, you know, if you had a dollar for every time someone asked you either at a meeting or even outside a meeting when they see you, hey, Tom, the same way you just asked me, hey, Tom, can we use CPA money to do this? Or Francis, can we use CPA money to do this? I got an idea. You know, a lot of times it's not easy to figure out. And the first thing you should do before you even say yes or no is you pull out this chart. Um, and I even recommend that CPCs bring this chart to every meeting and put it on the table. Of course, you're not, you're not meeting in person right now, but you will be again. Um, one community even put it on a big piece of foam core, you know, and they hang it on the wall every time they meet. So the way to use this chart to figure out whether something is eligible for funding or not, um, you know, you all know the four categories of CPA, open space, historic, recreation, and housing. Everyone knows that. But what people don't realize is, um, in terms of what's allowable to spend it on, you also have to satisfy these verbs that are on the left side of this chart. So, um, how does this work? Well, if someone says to you, hey, can we buy the, the brown and, was it Coke or Cock? Or co coach? Coke? How do you pronounce Coke. that? Let's call it Coke. Coke. The, can we buy the Brown and Coke property? It's open space. I'd love to have that, you know, for future recreational use. Well, let's go to the chart. Um, what category is it in? Well, it's probably an open space, right? It's open land, um, you know, open field, former farmland, maybe if it had a barn on it. So it's in the open space category. And what are you going to spend your CPA money on? You're going to send your CPA money to acquire it. And so you look in that box and there's a yes. So yes, we can use our CPA money to acquire and buy for the town, the Brown and Coke property. And that's kind of how you use the chart. Um, and these verbs, acquire, create, preserve, support, and rehabilitate, um, have definitions. They're in section two of the CPA legislation. Um, so there's a definition of preserve. Um, that one happens to be a short one. It's to protect an asset from injury, harm, or destruction. There's a long definition for support and, and, um, and rehabilitate and acquire. But, um, um, you know, as long as it fits within the category and as long as it fits within the definition of one of these verbs, it is eligible for funding. Um, and then your committee can debate the merits of it, you know, whether you want to spend your money on it. But that's why it's a two-part process, you know. Is the project eligible? Let's look at the chart. And yes, it's eligible. Now, is it a good idea? You know, does it fit within our budget? Does it fit within our priorities? What are the questions we have? Can we tweak this project to make it a little bit better? That's part of your whole, whole process that you have. Um, so um, a couple of things I'll point out on this chart. Um, and John, it's, it's 822. So tell me what time you'd like to be wrapped up. Um, so how much uh, left do you, do you have? Or is it... Um, well, I can, uh, this is toward the end. So if I finish up in the next um, five to 10 minutes, you think that? Sure, sure. Yeah. Next few minutes. Yeah. Okay. And then we'll... All right. Thank you. Um, so um, uh, one thing I was going to point out about this, this chart is that, um, see that box down in the recreation category that says yes over to rehabilitation. So normally I'm in a room with you guys and I just point on the screen to where it is, but this is a little tougher. I don't know. Can you see that? mouse that I have on the screen. Um, yes. So it's this box right here. So um, until 2012, what this box said was, yes, if you acquired or created with CPA funds. So you couldn't rehabilitate any recreational land unless you had purchased it with CPA funds. And of course, the only thing you've purchased is Brown and Coke, right? Mm -hmm. So if the track people had come to you and said, can we resurface our track before 2012, you couldn't because you hadn't bought the track with CPA funds. 
And this is the change that was made in 2012. We convinced the legislature to change that box to just a straight yes. So now it doesn't matter whether you bought a piece of land with CPA funds or whether you built that track originally with CPA funds, you can spend CPA funds to rehabilitate it. All right. So moving on, um, something that, um, you know, you always want to keep in the back of your mind is that, um, you know, right now you seem to have a, a decent amount of money in your accounts. Um, so you, you have some flexibility, but some communities, you know, spend everything every year that they have. Um, and you might find a couple big projects come in next year and you're, you know, you're down to, you know, bare bones in your bank account. So you can always borrow um, against your future CPA surcharge in the same way the town borrows against its regular tax revenue to build a new school, to pave a road, to buy an expensive fire truck. They bond, and that bond is backed by the future tax revenue in East Longmeadow. You can do the same thing with CPA. So don't be afraid of really large projects that might come in um, because if you don't have the money in the bank, you could always recommend to the council that you pay for that project by issuing a bond. Um, and that bond does not require an override vote um, at the ballot. Um, you're paying for it out of your future 1% revenue stream. So the, the, the electorate has already given you that revenue stream of 1% every year, you're bonding against that. Um, you can't bond against the state matching money because that, as we know, is an uneven funding source. You know, the match varies every year. Um, but your 1% is a pretty rock solid funding source. Um, it does ratchet up the level of support you need at the council. It's a two thirds vote to bond as opposed to majority vote. Um, and then the other thing is you can't pay debt service on a bond that was issued by the town. You can't, you can't pay back that bond. It has to be issued originally at your recommendation under CPA in order to be able to pay it back with CPA funds. So that's something to consider. And if you ever get to the point where you have a big project that you think you might not, you know, have the money for and you still want to do it and you want to bond, I have a separate half hour presentation just on bonding that I'd be happy to come back Please. to one. Chair, may I approach Stuart? Yes, Tom. So Stuart, uh, we have about a $7.6 million project for Heritage Park. Uh, for recreation with, you know, open space. So this would be something that we could bond out through open space and recreation. Correct. An um, amphitheater, like like what they did in Agawam, Massachusetts. Oh, um, what's the name of that park there? Yeah, they bought the land for that, and then they built that park out from scratch. Um, River Park, I think it is. Or the school park. Yes, it's school park. Yes, you're correct. Yeah, school Street Park, I think it's called. Yeah, I'm actually familiar with that project. That was one of the first really big recreation projects. Um, and I'll, I'll bet you they bond that. I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure they did. Um, mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so, Tom, you'd have a number of ways. Um, you know, you'd have to see if your local surcharge would support the debt service on that large of bond. Um, but you don't have to pay at all, right? So you could present it to the council saying that CPA is willing to bond $4 million of it. Um, and you'd like to bond 3.6 million, you know, the other part of it against the town's regular tax revenue stream. Um, or you could say, we're going to take the 500,000 from our undesignated fund uh, and put that toward it and then 3.5 bond. And then we want the town to bond the rest. Um, so you can mix and match, you know, current money with um, town money um, and CPA money to come up with that whole figure. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, because there was some bona contention about uh, in regards to whether or not we could bond or not with CPC money. Greatly yep. appreciate it. Thank you. You absolutely can. Um, so getting toward the end here, um, these are kind of just five basic tenets of CPA that I always like to remind folks um, because they come up over and over again. These are probably the, f the five things that we see the most often. Um, the first, I kind of hinted at it a little bit. 
um, with that up and down slide I showed you that CPA is generally, is, is not generally, it's always for new initiatives, not to supplant things that the city is already doing um, in its regular budget. It's not, they're not designed to move over regular budget expenses to you. So Tom, you can build that new park, um, but you can't pay the um, staff at the recreation department with CPA funds because they're already in the regular budget um, or you can't do the maintenance on, on town fields, the, the grass cutting or the fertilizer because that's already in the regular town budget. Um, so so why, why can we do town maintenance on a facility then? Well, that was the first question we had is whether that track was maintenance or capital expense. And it's, it seemed like the most of the committee agreed with the school committee that they felt it was a capital expense, but that was the first part of that discussion was whether that track is, is maintenance or capital. I think they said that Longmeadow did a similar project and they felt it was, it was a capital project. So that's a tough call on those tracks, but um, you know, that's, that's up to you folks. Um, Thank you. Maintenance is, is never allowed with CPA funds or operating expenses. Um, as we talked about Tom, um, recreation is for outdoor recreation only. So um, no structures, gymnasiums, buildings, um, unless they're small and support the outdoor recreational use. Um, one thing for historic projects is important, and, and I know Tony and I have had a discussion about this, and then John too, is when you do historic work, um, um, you have to follow the Secretary of Interior standards. You know, CPA um, is an extra funding source um, so that you can do your historic work properly. Um, you know, a lot of towns, they when they have to pay for it out of their own budgets, you know, they don't necessarily do the right thing by historic buildings. You know, they'll take out the beautiful old wooden original windows in a historic building and put vinyl replacement windows in. Um, you know, that's not um, proper historic standards and CPA uh, gives you the extra money so you can do it right. And so there is something called the Secretary of Interior Standards. That's also on the technical assistance page of our website. Um, and those are required anytime you do any work with CPA funds on a historic building. And then the last thing is whenever you buy something with CPA funds, um, usually land or a building, you have to have a permanent restriction on that property um, held by someone other than the town that guarantees that property is going to be used forever for what you purchased it for. So for example, Brown and, and Coke, the open space, um, hopefully has a permanent restriction on it. Um, this is a step that is missed by some communities and um, the state is kind of now cracking down a little bit on communities. So that is something to check. Um, I don't know how many people have been on the committee back when 2009. Yeah, and, and Stuart, great point. Actually, it was designated finally open space and recreation. Okay. Um, did that happen recently? Did it take a while to do that or? I think it happened like three or four years ago. It took, it sometimes takes a long time um, for that to yeah. happen. But, but it, it was designated under the previous town manager as open space and recreation. Okay. That might not be the same thing as a, as a restriction actually. So, but we can talk about that offline. Cause I, I did promise uh, John, we'd be yeah. wrapping up. So, um, and in fact, that is the last slide. So, um, you know, we do have that hotline and um, we're happy to answer any other questions. Um, and John, I'll turn it back to you. Um, if folks have questions now, or if you want to move on to your agenda, um, I'm happy to yeah, take questions. So I just had a very quick question. Um, would you be able to uh, email me a copy of this so that um, the committee is able to take a look at or have some of this information uh, at their fingertips? Absolutely, I'll do that right when we're done here tonight. Okay, um, and then so I will uh, I will open it up to kind of quick questions, just time permitted now that we're a little after 8.30, uh, if anybody has, um, mm -hmm. uh, Francis. Yeah. yeah, I just, I would like to um, ask you, John, if you could do some research on whether Norcross House, because we have that coming before us at our next meeting, um, you know, whether it follows any of these guidelines and where it comes in in terms of being a historic building with a permanent restriction on the deed. Could you check all that out for us before the meeting? Yes, uh, we also, uh, I know the very next thing that we'll be talking about, and I, I don't, I'm not sure if we'll be able to get to as long as I 
uh, to the extent of what I want to, but we have two people from the historical commission that are in the attendees uh, list that could probably answer that question. Okay, thank uh, you. If not, that could be probably answered fairly quickly. And, and Jonathan, I know I asked you when we talked about Norcross House if that if that restriction ever did get done, and um, it, it definitely did. I actually found a copy of it in our files too. Okay, so, thank you. Do you guys have a copy of that, the Norcross House um, historic preservation restriction? Because I did come across it, and I can send it to you. That would actually be very helpful. I can yeah. disseminate that to the committee as well. Yeah. So that did that did get done. That preservation restriction. That was one of my concerns. Um, but it is it is um, approved by Mass Historic, and is it is filed at the Registry of Deeds, and actually someone probably had to pay the CPA filing fee when they filed that restriction. You know, so you contributed twenty dollars to the trust fund back when you filed that restriction at the registry. But it is all taken care of. So I'll send a copy of that to you, along with a copy of the presentation. Okay. Uh, does anybody else have uh, questions? Uh, no question, Jonathan, it's Brian through the chair. Stuart, I appreciate your time and your presentation, uh, especially for myself. I've only been with CPC for a little over a year, so this is really good, very informative, and, and I appreciate it. And Jonathan, you said you're going to send this presentation to the members. Is that correct? Yeah, so once I get it from Stuart, I can uh, send it via email to everyone. Um, Fantastic. So, Stuart, thank you again. Great. Nice to meet you, Brian. And Likewise. Also, if you have any questions, and um, Jonathan, I'm happy to work with you on the budget figures once you get them. So you have yeah, those. definitely. We'll have a uh, side chat about this soon uh, in time for the next meeting so that we can kind of uh, make sure things are straight. Great. All right. Well, good to be with you all tonight. And Thank you very much. Good rest Thanks of again. I'm going to sign off, and um, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you very much, Stuart. All right. Take yeah. care. Good night. Thank you. Okay, so following through the rest of the agenda, just to kind of start curving it out, uh, I'm not sure, Mr. Mack, if you're able to invite in Tina Osgood and Donna Martinez. Uh, they are the applicants for the um, Norcross, yep. to Norcross House. Yep. Application. On the way. So we'll get them connected in. So I'm not sure if you guys can hear me. Oh. I can hear you. Okay. This is Donna. Hi, Donna. Hi, Donna. Hi. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, so obviously, I'm not sure if you, uh, if both of you saw the uh, uh, the our meeting pre up to this point or caught yes. uh, much of it. Um, so I, I can open up to the rest of the board if they have questions on this, but I feel like especially on the question of budget, um, there, those questions might still be relevant to this project as well. Um, I'm obviously, it's a different project. Um, one question that was answered was that Stuart said that there, that there was a restriction or that, that had been filed properly. So that was actually one of my questions to you, to both of you, but he was able to answer that for me. Yes, um, I have a copy of that too. Beautiful. Um, so I will, uh, have the uh, rest of the board if you have any questions. Uh, just judging from what the how the first um, uh, how the first application went this evening, uh, I would feel uncomfortable uh, voting probably because I believe that the rest of the committee express it feels the same reasons. Uh, and and my hope is for the next agenda, um, instead of just having a discussion on it, um, perhaps making it known that that agenda topic will be voted on in that evening. And perhaps that should be a general practice that is uh, adopted going forward. Uh, and perhaps certain time limits, more time limits and constraints on when we act on these um, projects uh, so that we're accountable to the mm -hmm. applicants as well. Um, so with that, uh, does anybody have any questions for uh, the applicants? I, I have one question. I was just looking over the application and because of the presentation we just heard and he's saying that any um, historic, whoa, I'm looking for my notes, <laughs> um, historic um, preservation needs to follow the secretary standards. And I just wondered if maybe 
Norcross could submit a little more detail about how they're going to do the repairs to meet the standards, the historic standards? Well, um, the repairs to the porch have already been done. Oh. And they were done exactly the way that they were prior. Okay. So we didn't change anything. We just took out what was there and put in exactly what was there. There was no alterations made. Okay. And just, um, just to let you know, Francis, because I know this was your question too, I have from my notes from the last meeting, and I know the budget has changed, but at the point when we were discussing this in December, um, the budget or the, the funds in the historic portion were around $262,000. So I can only guess since nothing was spent between now and then that it's either that or more. Is that correct, Jonathan? Yeah, so that so that uh, I have I have not been able I I'm trying to look on my computer while this meeting is happening. Uh, I haven't been able to find there was a uh, meeting minutes from uh, I think a year ago that had the last uh, updated numbers. I, I believe we had if I'm mis if I'm not mistaken, we had a February 2020 meeting, and I had uh, gotten updated numbers at that point. Of course, now it's been almost it, it's been a full year since that meeting. Um, so those, all of those accounts have um, increased uh, by the virtue of, there's only one uh, application that has, there's been three applications that have been recommended out of this committee, but only one of those has actually been voted on and approved by the council. And that was a, uh, um, a project regarding the uh, Heritage Park, which came out of uh, recreation. So there has been no historical um, applications that have been both recommended by the council. So no, that that number, if anything, has either not changed or gone up. Uh, yes. I'm sorry, I have another question. So the total amount that the, that Norcross is asking for is under twelve thousand dollars. And uh, for we, the porch, yes. And then what was the other the other thing? The other thing was um, we have to restore a portion of the barn that has, uh, the carriage house, that okay. has damage. Okay, so we need to vote on both of those at the same time, Jonathan? Uh, we can vote those. So those are separate applications. Um, so we can, well, we would, we would do one vote on one of them and then one vote on another one. Okay. Uh, we can we can Since we know there's enough funding in that account, um, I would like to recommend that we at least approve the um, reimbursement for the porch expenses at this time. If I'll make a motion okay. that we vote on the uh, porch application expenses. All right. Uh, do I hear a second on that? <laughs> okay. Uh, is there any discussion from... Uh, other board members. Uh, hearing none, uh, I will go to, um, unless there's anybody who comes up now, hearing none, I will go to the vote. So this will be a recommendation on the, this is the carriage, this is the, I'm sorry, this is the, for the porch. Right. Mm -hmm. For the Norcross porch uh, for uh, what is the exact uh, number oh, here? I just had it in front of me. $11,625. Yeah. Uh, that is the, um, the number that the applicant is asking on this uh, specific project. Um, so I will go uh, from the way it's on in my computer here. So uh, Francis? Yes. Lynn? Uh, Lynn, I'm not sure if we're able to, if you're able to hear or she, can, she could raise her yeah. hand if she's in favor yeah, or she, she or can, she can yeah. put it in the chat. You could put oh. it in the chat. Okay, can you hear me? Uh, a little bit, yes. Um, oh. It, try, try perhaps doing it in the chat. That might be easier. Okay. Let's 
So either yes, no, or abstaining. Okay, while Lynn is typing out her vote, I'll keep moving uh, here. Uh, Tom? I just want, sent a question. Um, I, I thought I heard that this is a reimbursement because the porch was already done. Yes. Okay. So on the so Tom on the question before us. To either approve or disapprove the uh, the project. And it's under historical, correct? Yes, uh, it, it will be coming out of the historical uh, account, historical preservation account. And have we heard from historical on this? Uh, historical is in favor of it. Then Tom K is in favor. Uh, Brian? My vote is yes. Okay. And uh, Ralph, I'm, I think you already made your voice. Yes again. <laughs> yes again. Okay. And I am a yes as well. Okay. So that, so with uh, a unanimous vote that. Uh, Lynn is a yes. She, she put it in the chat. Lynn was yes. Okay. I apologize. Sorry. The going Looking, I, I've unfortunately been missing some things from the chat just because I haven't been looking at it this entire time. Um, so I apologize for that. Uh, so Lynn uh, Booth is also a yes. So that is a unanimous yes from uh, six members. Um, I don't see Tony on here. I know he was here previously. I'm not sure if something may have happened uh, technologically. Um, but he is not present for this vote. So that is a unanimous vote. Uh, so we will, so that is now going to be moving on to the town council. Um, and that, so what I will do is I will uh, put together, um, so it's going to be recommending the full amount coming out of historical preservation. And I will put together uh, a cover letter or a letter of recommendation on behalf of the committee uh, to submit to the town council and they can review this um, project at their earliest convenience. Chair, may, may I approach a uh, historical commission yes. member? Ralph, um, in, in this situation, were you involved with the, the process with Norcross? Meaning what? Meaning, you know, you're, you're the representative of historical. So, did historical and Norcross have a conversation? Oh yes, we're neighbors and uh, we work back and forth very well together. That, see, that's fantastic. Thank you very much. Okay. Mm -hmm. it's, now we have the second part. Now we have the second one that is for the carriage house door. Um, so where, so now, so okay, so we've approved one of them now. So, um, where what is the pleasure of the committee right now um i i'm not sure if people want to either uh wait or 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 move forward uh i know you know we had a, a very good uh conversation with both uh tina and donna at our december meeting um and uh it seems that some like i said earlier some of the questions of whether it's in the registry and whatnot, those those things seem to be in order uh, at this time. Uh, the actual, new, the specific number being asked in that um, uh, project is uh, just a tad above uh, $13,400. Uh, so it is ultimately, um, and it's going to be also coming out fully of the historic preservation fund. Uh, so ultimately it's, uh, the discretion of the board where to go forward. Uh, I, I had said at the beginning of this discussion is I just, I, I didn't know if people still had issues around the budget or other issues that were especially brought up from our pre previous discussion on the previous application. So I was uh, 
hesitant to move forward. Uh, and, and We lost you, Jonathan. I think your internet came blocked out. Perhaps uh, better structured rules um, around procedure, um, because there's there's a lot of there's not a lot of information uh, that is that that is that is available. So, um, so what? How does the committee feel? Are there any motions, or uh, do we feel it's best to wait, or? I think the longer we wait, the worse the, uh, the writing uh, will progress, and I think the quicker vote will be much better. Okay. Francis, I saw your hand raised. Yeah, I wanted to hear from Ralph, and thank you, Ralph, for giving your input. And also, I wanted to say that due to the small amount of the request, I'm not as concerned about the budget problem the resurfacing project was quite costly so i really wanted to see figures before approving that but i think we have the information now that this qualifies as a historical project under the cpc so i'd like to make a motion that we approve the uh, project for the carriage house okay uh do i hear a second second Okay, so this will be a vote on the CPC application, uh, Norcross House for the carriage, uh, for the carriage uh, house uh, for thirteen thousand four hundred dollars will be coming out of the historical preservation fund. Um, so with that, uh, I will go uh, in the order here, uh, Francis. Yes. Uh, Lynn, um, I'm, I think maybe what you'll do for this one again, okay, she typed it out, okay, good. Uh, Lynn Booth is a yes as well uh, from this, from the uh, chat thing here. Uh, Tom? Yes. Brian? And may I make a comment that yeah. I like the process. Thank you. Definitely. Thank you. Uh, Brian? Definitely a yes. Ralph? Yes. And I am a yes as well. Uh, so Tina and Donna, it, it looks like uh, uh, we uh, are fully in sync here. Uh, you, both the proposals uh, are recommended as is. So we will have um, now two different um, projects that will be going before the council at their earliest uh, convenience. Uh, so I will write up uh, letters for both of those projects and perhaps we could work together with that. Um, to present this in front of the uh, town council, so. We'd be happy to work with you in uh, pulling that information together and really appreciate your support. Yes, Absolutely. thank you very, very much, everybody. Thank you. And please sell, sell some hot chocolate at the ice skating rink. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tom, I would love to talk to you about that. You can get my contact information from John. Uh, I'll send it out on the, on the Zoom, 413-537-7905. I can get hate mail later. Yeah. Please, please consider sending news about Norcross House out to the community, please. Absolutely. Oh, we'd love to. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you very much. Thank you for the presentation. It was great. And please come ice skating, everybody. <laughs> well, maybe my husband will ice skate, but I don't know if he'd let me out there. <laughs> well, you know what? It, it, it's it's a community. A community came together to provide outdoor activities uh, for for our town, and it's you know I think it's a wonderful thing. So I, I, I was one of those nut, nut nut nutty guys out there at midnight with Don LePage. Uh, snow blowing that snow place. Blowing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it, thank it, you it, for it, that. It takes all of us to make it work. Yes, it does. Thank you very much. 20 years ago, I would have been there every day. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel, too. <laughs> Things change. What can you do? Well, I, I'm going to go back to the Bruce Finney uh, West Palm Beach or Palm Beach. Uh, uh, video. <laughs>
Okay, so uh, Tina and Donna, thank you very much. Okay, so uh, just following along, so we're really uh, basically at the tail end here. Um, so the October 1st applications update, so this is both the, um, the dog park sidewalk and the um, Pine Knoll playground. So I'm in the process of putting together letters for those. So my hope is now that we have, so now we have four that are going to the town council. Uh, I'm going to do them in order of how they were voted. Uh, so the uh, dog uh, bark park sidewalk, uh, Pine Knoll, and then both of these uh, Norcross House applications. Um, I'm not sure how the town council will do it. They may split it up into multiple meetings considering now there's four different projects. Um, so it's my hope to, um, to, to get those two letters out and then, and then getting those other letters uh, sent forward as well. Um, and uh, the next thing is, um, so the annual report, I will also be putting together an annual report. Um, the deadline, I believe, is sometime in the middle of uh, February. I think it's maybe February 19th, if I'm, I might be wrong on that date. Um, so I will send that over to the, uh, the committee as well um, so that they can take a look at that as well. Uh, it's usually a, a fairly short and small um, uh, report just kind of explain what we've done which uh, there has been not that much action uh, for us in the past year just with COVID and everything and but there's been updates to membership and everything and on the subject of membership um, it would actually be great uh, I got a email from Jennifer Kerr she wanted to kind of update the contact spreadsheet uh, so this is just between us just so that you know if there's you know, need be. Uh, I have pretty much everyone's, I think, email. I have everyone's email here or, or a workable email um, that I've been sending stuff to. But if, you know, if everyone feels comfortable, I have some of your phone numbers. I don't have a, others' phone numbers. So if you wouldn't mind perhaps um, sending that uh, contact information over or updated contact information, that would be excellent so that I can kind of update it. Uh, and especially if things come up at the last minute uh, and, you know, email might not be the quickest means, um, you know, a, a, a quick phone call or something might, might be easier as well. Um, so with that, um, uh, so I'm thinking, so for the agenda for our next meeting, uh, will be, uh, you know, hopefully a, a discussion and a, uh, on the uh, high school track uh, project, um, kind of getting things ironed out uh, with that. So hopefully maybe recreation, Tom is able to, uh, chat about it between that period of time. Uh, the next meeting for us will be um, March March 4th, Thursday, March 4th at 630. Um, so hopefully at that point, uh, a lot of these questions will be answered and things. So, think, so you know, uh, it, can, it can move forward. Um, and then the other hope that I have is uh, we'll have budget numbers and I can even, uh, you know, I have that meeting, I'll be having that meeting tomorrow, uh, I can send over those specifics as well and um, helping to put together uh, some type of uh, budget I think would be helpful. And I hope um, perhaps if, if any of you have thoughts privately that you want to email me, um, maybe about improving the way we do procedure exactly, um, maybe posting specific a specific vote like this evening, we're going to have a vote on this specific um, having a deadline we need to act on these projects. These projects were sent to us um, in, uh, for the October 1st deadline um, and just the nature of just holding meetings, you know, once a month arrived us at this point now in February and now we're on the door of the uh, April 1st deadline and I'm expecting, I'm sure we will have uh, some applications at that point as well. Um, so, and then one other point of new business, it's, it's very late, so I don't want to keep everybody uh, long, and um, I want to have a little bit of a longer discussion with this, but uh, definitely I want to uh, adhere to, um, people are definitely a little, I'm sure, tired after this uh, very, very eventful, very long uh, meeting we've had this evening. Um, in terms of the Heritage Park Architectural Design Project, which was approved in early February, 
So that was for about $113,000 that was approved by this committee. And that was also then subsequently approved by the uh, town council. Uh, so I've had, I had uh, some discussions with Bruce. I've had some discussions with Donna uh, over the last little period. And it appears, and Tom, you can correct me if I'm wrong, being that this is a recreation project, uh, that the architect that money for the architectural design will not be going towards an architectural design anymore because there is already an architectural design um, that is that can be used. So there was a discussion about possibly using it for soft costs was the word. Um, and you know, we can have a discussion. I'd like to have a broader discussion about this. Uh, at our next meeting, um, it would not uh, be, and I, w I actually wish I uh, was, was here right now, but it would uh, not be, I think, the best idea to roll that money over to another cost that isn't um, actually stipulated in the application. The application said that that money was going specifically to and fully to an architectural design. Uh, if it's not going to that anymore, um, we don't have the ultimate authority on that. The town council does. It would be, uh, we could recommend, we only can recommend things. It would be in the best interest to have that money come back. And then I know that there might be other projects about Heritage Park coming down to the pike. Uh, in my opinion, by doing this, by bringing the money back and then having a new application come forward, it'll make it significantly cleaner um, and just easier instead of having that little bit of money. Um, so I, Tom, I'm not sure if you got all that, but I wanted to get your thoughts being that uh, you're I, John, uh, John here. Yes. Um, as having a conversation with Bruce um, and some other folks, I do agree with you on that. And um, that discussion was had. And um, yes. So okay. perfect. Um, that so money. It very late. Because, so, what we'll do it, so, so just, John, just to let you know that DPW, DPW feels that they can take on some of these, um, some of the Heritage Park project uh, upon themselves. Oh, so like the, the design aspect or some of these specific projects. Right. And, and by the way, there was already in, in one of my biggest, and this is why I'm, I don't know, maybe a little maniacal on this, but we already spent $25,000 for a study that was already done now it's eight years ago, but still that same study was done. Yes, I was aware of that. I, this, this was sort of when it was brought to our committee uh, at a sort, sort of a necessity to move forward on, I believe it was two fields uh, and an access road. And I think perhaps some increase in parking and lighting. Um, so that was what the architectural design was going to go for. But then I had heard in other conversations that, the previous $25,000 architectural design would be perfectly fine to just use. Yep. Yep. Exactly. And that, and that's, uh, yep. And, and that was all included in that project. Okay. Uh, Francis. Yes. I ask a quick question. Will be, will we be getting the minutes of the meetings? I, we didn't get minutes from the last meeting. Yes, yeah, so I that that's another thing. Uh, we don't have an administrative assistant, so it's sort of <laughs> so you're kind of looking at the administrative assistant at this oh, moment, uh, um, and just things have uh, built up a little bit, and we've not had as many meetings as we normally would in a typical year. So um, I'm hoping to have meeting minutes to the most recent meeting so that we can um, have a full discussion on them. And the other thing is, and the rest of the board uh, perhaps could maybe help me on this or the community. Um, to perhaps finding an administrative assistant. I think that'll be important, not just for the minutes, but perhaps putting together um, uh, stronger regulations or stronger rules on certain things like procedure um, so that it's just, you know, I, I only have so much time in a day uh, mm -hmm. to, to dedicate to this stuff. Uh, but okay, I, I'll I, volunteer to email you about that. Okay, uh, okay. good. And, I'll and help I, you with it. Yes, and I, I, I love this committee. Uh, I like I like the debate. I like the discussion, uh, and I like serving in this community in whatever capacity. Um, and I want to make sure you know it's done correctly um, and it's done transparently. So you know I I try to give it my all. So we will have. Thank you very much. Yes, and so um, 
with that, uh, so yeah, we will work on many, many of those different things. Uh, I'll have that meeting tomorrow. I'll have those numbers for this committee. Uh, and right after I get off this in the next handful of minutes, I will also, um, I just actually got the, I see the PowerPoint presentation was sent to me. So I will send that over in the next couple of minutes uh, to this uh, uh, committee after, our, after we get off our Zoom here. So with that, does anybody else have anything that they want to bring to the board's attention? I make a motion to adjourn. Seconded. <laughs> Uh, all right, and so motion to adjourn. Uh, so uh, any discussion? Nope. Uh, so Francis? Yes. Uh, Lynn, uh, you can maybe perhaps type in the chat again or Tom? Uh, Lynn is a yes. yes. Is a yes. Tom. That's the motion I put forth. Okay, uh, that's a yes. Uh, Brian? Yep. Uh, Ralph? <laughs> Ralph? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and I am a yes as well. Okay. So, well, thank you everyone. Thank uh, you. And thank you. Uh, for a very fruitful discussion. I appreciate it. We've got, we got through a lot of business this evening. Uh, so thank you guys for staying a little bit past a regular period that, that we like to stay. So thank you. And thank uh, you. Take have care, a great, everybody. everybody have a great rest of their evening. Thank you. Thanks, John. Yes. Thank you. All right.